Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, here in the city of Orlando, Florida, the worst mass shooting in United States history took place. Tonight, we ask you to join us in honoring the victims and their families of this senseless tragedy with a moment of silence. This is where you say something meaningful, something people don't forget. So speak from the heart. I'm the world champion. I'm the world champion. If I want to cement my legacy as one of the best, I gotta beat the absolute best. City of Orlando, the longtime home of Impact Wrestling, and the host city for tonight's Summer Spectacular. From a jam-packed Impact Zone, this is Slammiversary. How did these here devils do it? Oh my God, that was unbelievable! The X Division is the only place in the world you'll get this! Champion of the world, Trevor Lee. Partner, 
We have plenty of issues with the Helms dynasty. My first, though, tonight is Trevor Lee and Andrew Everett are opponents, but they're coming to the ring together. They feel they're a part of something bigger under the tutelage of Gregory Shane Helms, the Helms dynasty. And you know what? To your point, that may be the case. I mean, these boys are like brother under the tutelage of him. He's raising them as such. He's teaching them how to work together throughout adversity. Will that play out here tonight? I don't know. But the big question is, why the hell is him dressed like that? All four men will be competing in the ring at the same time. The first to earn a pinfall or submission will lead as X Division champion. For Gregory Shane Helms, doesn't matter if it's the incumbent champion, Trevor Lee, or Andrew Everett. Well, the odds are obviously in the favor of the Helms dynasty. But again, look at the way Helms is dressed. It's almost as if he's ready to celebrate victory already. Gregory Shane Helms brings the Helms dynasty to the ring. Trevor Lee became the X Division champion on February 2nd, defeating Tigre Uno. And Ladies and gentlemen, referee Brian Hebner has just informed me that TNA management, due to recent outside interference, has ruled that Gregory Shane Helms is banned from ringside. Great call. Great call by the Impact officials. Get Gregory Shane Helms out of here before he can do any damage, before he becomes a footnote and another victory for Trevor Lee. Well, you know what, look at Helms, he's pretty upset. That's like $99 going to waste. He went out there and got that suit. I've never seen a, a five-piece suit, I mean a five-button suit before, but nonetheless, Gregory Shane Helms can head to the locker room. Gregory Shane Helms ejected, and again, I think it's a great call because Helms has gotten involved in more than one match where Trevor Lee has been defending the X Division Championship. And now it's happened this past Tuesday night. Absolutely, and now let's look at the bigger issue to a question that you posed earlier. How about this? Helms is not going to be raised on what's going to happen Ooh. with the camaraderie of the Trevor Lee and Andrew Everett. And DJZ and Eddie Edwards take advantage. The opening match at Slammiversary 2016 for the X Division Championship. The X Division has always been a cornerstone of Impact Wrestling, a great way to celebrate the X Division. Big Slammiversary started with an X Division title match. Absolutely. I mean, hey, man, it's Slammiversary. It's 14 years in the making. Who thought it would be? We did because Impact Rock and the X Division is part of the reason that Impact has the greatest wrestlers in the world. Rock is crowd here in the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida. DJ Z on one side of the ring, Eddie Edwards is on the other, and now the Helms Dynasty coming together and working as a cohesive unit. Will that unit be cohesive if it comes down to Lee and Andrew Everett? Look at this by DJ Z. Hurricane Rana off the step. Only something that DJ Z can do, Daddy. And take a look at Andrew Everett, lands on his feet. Got caught by Eddie Edwards, and Eddie sends Everett. the steel steps. Talk about an OMG moment. X Division Championship on the line here at Slammiversary. Well, it looks to me like Eddie Edwards and DJ Z came out with a game plan on their own. They wanted to go ahead and take down and take out the Hell's Dynasty. Well, look, Eddie Edwards and DJ Z are friends. They, they travel together. They work out together. They know each other very well, but they know at the end of this, this is a one-on-one -on -one match. Absolutely. This is an opportunity to go on to become X Division champion. That's first and foremost. Certainly going to be interesting to see how it breaks down. Hey, we got a bell. First X Division champion, AJ Styles. The most reigns as X Division champion comes to Chris Sabin, who had eight former X Division champions, include Rob Van Dam and the Amazing Red. Hey, man, the greatest of the great. Some of the most athletically gifted men have held that title. Oh. Trevor Lee hard in the buckle, and Eddie Edwards follows up with a big running elbow. Jump kicked by DJ Z, and the champion is rocked all the way to the ropes, and here comes Eddie Edwards with the clothesline, and now we have two challenges in the ring. DJ Z, schoolboy in the center, and a kick out by Eddie Edwards. Well, you knew this is going to happen sooner or later. That thought backslide coming, and DJ Z pops free. DJ Z. Another pinning opportunity here. A quick kick up by Eddie Edwards. Gotta love it. These two are yeah. going for wins, going for the championship. DJ Z again escapes. DJ Z shoulders down, pops free at two. Who's Another gonna pinning have opportunity, the opportunity here. Yeah. Eddie Edwards pops free at two. Jeez. And a stalemate, a standoff between these two tremendous athletes. You saw there. Champ trying to get up there and maybe get behind, but DJ was ready for it. Again.
First athlete to gain a pinfall or submission will leave here tonight as X Division champion is Trevor Lee now back into the ring with Eddie Edwards. Nice back elbow there by Eddie. If you read my blog on impactwrestling.com, you know how I feel about Eddie Edwards. I feel that Eddie is a future world champion looking to become X Division oh. champion here tonight. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I don't know who got the worst of that. If you saw the way Eddie Edwards back went over that top rope, and people need to know that those aren't, I mean, those ropes have cables in them. It's just not ropes. Talk about how it's just Andrew Everett in the ring now. Andrew Everett surveying the landscape. And Andrew Everett! Oh, my goodness, did you see that? Twisting corkscrew off a springboard. What a move by Andrew Everett. What a move. What won't these guys do to walk out as the X Division champion? It's all about the prestigious X Division title here for these four athletes. They were involved in Ultimate X. They were involved in tag team matches. And now here they are at Slammiverse Revive once again for the X Division championship. Everett looking to make good on what he did on the outside. He's got Eddie Edwards back inside the ring. Trevor Lee right behind him, and now the Helms dynasty. Even though Gregory Shane Helms was ejected from ringside, they can go to work here. They can work together, and we need to see one more look at this. Check this out. Wow. Off the top rope, man. I mean, these guys at the X Division will bring and innovate and show you things that we've never seen before. And now the Helms dynasty have isolated Eddie Edwards, Trevor Lee going to work here, the technical savage. He's known Andrew Everett his entire life. They've all known each other their entire lives. And so that bond, that bond is already there. And all that Hurrahams has done has just made it stronger. At least that's what we all believe at this point. Lee and Everett both grew up not too far from Cameron, North Carolina. Oh, Looks like Trevor Lee is biting the nose. Ah. That's the savage part of the technical savage. Well, I mean, that's savage, but have you smelled his breath? I mean, come on. And take a look at this. Oh, Eddie Edwards. It's a boot up there and a high back elbow to the jaw of Andrew Everett. The opening match oh. of Slammiversary and a great double team move there by Everett and Lee. Yeah, Everett went for a drop toe hold and Lee just caught oh. him with the knee. DJZ trying to get back into this one. DJZ, look at this, rolls through, catches Trevor Lee. And DJZ with a jawbreaker. What does DJZ have in mind right now? DJZ starting to go to work here, building momentum, a flurry of offense. And listen to the crowd come alive for DJZ. They just love him. He has that Ricky the Dragon effect. And DJZ sends Andrew Everett down to the outside. Everett crashed hard off the apron, and here comes Trevor Lee. DJZ one step ahead. Lee ducks the clothesline. Here we go. Oh, what a collision. Talk about fast pace, man. Which way will they go? Most of this match will be held above the ring, and you can see DJZ looking to fly here. Eddie Edwards with a suicide dive. Eddie Edwards through the rope with that shot of caffeine that we always need. DJZ got caught by Trevor Lee. Trevor Lee looking for that German suplex. Roll through there by DJZ. Shoulders down, new champion, and Lee pops for it, too. And DJZ goes over the rope, takes out both Everett and Eddie Edwards. What a match. Partner, you said it before. These men putting their bodies on the line for the X Division. They, they let it all hang out, Daddy. They're going to come up with things just off the fly. Ooh, look at that. DJ just kicked the turnbuckle as the champ's face was painted on top of it. Well, if you follow DJZ on social media, you know that he's always training, always lucha training, always inside the wrestling ring. Got caught there by Trevor Lee. And Andrew Everett running, shooting, star press, and here we go. Well, you know what? Dissension Look. in the ranks. I mean, that could have been over with. It could have been a three count. Andrew Everett may be X Division champion right now if it weren't for Trevor Lee. And Eddie Edwards takes out. Helms Dynasty. Drop kick from the top rope by the Wolf Man. Follow with a nip up. He's about to rock and roll. Again, it's every man for himself here. Don't tell that to Trevor Lee and Andrew Everett. Well, they're trying to stick to the game plan right now. What was the game plan for? Had Trevor Lee retain the X Division Championship? Well, if, if that's what Hurraham called for, then that's what it will be. Eddie Edwards trying to build speed here with these chops to the chest of Trevor Lee. And here comes Andrew Everett to break it up. Again, Andrew Everett, he was in a position to win this match. Lee threw him off. I mean, you know what? Look, they're a team, but you lose the championship, you lose money out of your pocket. And I don't think Lee wants that to happen. 
Eddie Edwards trying to get something going here against both Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee. Doesn't matter who he pins, just has to pin one of them to become X Division champion. Everett, oh, oh Thunderbomb in the center of the ring. Oh. And Trevor Lee, what a boot. DJC with a pair of knees. Good grief. Don't blink, you might miss something spectacular in this one. Trevor Lee turns DJC inside oh. and he takes out it too. How close was that? How close did Sam Bowles put away DJ? Trevor Lee would love to retain his X Division Championship here tonight, here at Slammiversary. Turned him inside out. Look, look in the eyes of Trevor Lee. The new breed of X Division star step up in Suguri by Eddie Edwards. Oh, what a shot there by Everett. And Everett followed with one of his own. And now Andrew Everett misses wildly here on DJZ. Yeah. Skull off the knee, and DJZ has Andrew Everett. Oh, 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 what a stop! Super kick! Super kick! He made it oh. by Eddie Edwards! And Eddie Edwards was that close! Oh, a half a second away! I thought it was over with! Eddie thought it was over with! This whole impact zone thought the match was over and we had a new champion! Partner, I'm used to losing my voice on pay-per-views, never in the first match, though. I know, right? I think you and I are almost there. Wow! I mean, but this is what the X Division does. It's so exciting. Gives you a different type of feel, different type of match. And you're only going to get the X Division in Impact Wrestling. Absolutely. You got that right, Daddy. Eddie Edwards. Wanting to climb to the top rope here. Eddie Edwards is very comfortable up there. You hear the primal howl from Eddie Edwards. One half of the Wolves. Oh. I'm sure Davey Richards is home watching live on pay-per-view. I'm sure he Cheering on his tag team partner. I'm sure he howled with him. I'm sure he did. DJ Z. That's set up there by Trevor Lee, DJZ, and Eddie Edwards near the top rope. Precarious situation here for DJZ. Look at Trevor Lee! What a throw! But now Eddie has regained himself. And Andrew goes Everett, a top rope springboard Hurricane Rana. Andrew Everett is going to become X Division champion, and Edwards kicks out. I don't know how much closer this can get, but I'm going to try to contain myself. The Listen family. to this yeah. place. They're speaking for me, man. Near fall after near fall for the X Division Championship. Andrew Everett. And I think Everett after that believes he can win this thing. We need to take another look at the incredible action. First, Trevor Lee with this throw on DJZ. What a move by Trevor Lee. And now Andrew Everett trying to dig deep. You can almost feel an anticipation here inside the impact zone. Everybody's As waiting. Everett on the top rope, 450 lands on his feet. DDT by DJC, the Lex Division champion. Can he turn him over? Cover shoulders down, and Trevor Lee breaks it up. Every man in this matchup, every athlete has come so close to securing the title. Ooh. Big shot there, and oh, Trevor Lee counters. Jumping knee right to the jaw of DJZ, who's on the floor in front of us. These four men have been in a battle. But look what we have right now, as you see, Everett Loud on the floor, Trevor Lee, Davey, excuse me, Eddie Edwards about to go at it. And now Trevor Lee and Eddie Edwards trading forearms, neither man backing down. This is the other side of the X Division, the tough and rugged side. Yeah, and this is the other side of the fatal four-way matchup, because this is the way you want it. Just two on two, a one-on-one. -on -one. The other two men are down, let's go. Isolate him on the outside and see what you can do. Big jumping forearm there by Trevor Lee, and now Eddie Edwards is down. If there's any time to finish the matchup, it is right now. One of those guys can hit the blowout maneuver, and it is done. Yeah, but can, can they get it done without Gregory Shane Helms, who's been ejected from ringside? Eddie Edwards, inside title. Eddie Edwards is X Division champion, and he wins. He did it. He didn't take the back out. The winner of the match, and new X Division champion of the world, Eddie Edwards. Congratulations to Eddie Edwards, the brand new X Division champion. Well, we were talking about a knockout punch. We were looking for a, for a blowout finish. And you know what? It was the brains of Eddie Edwards, the quick thinking, and a small package. And he is the new X Division champion. Trevor Lee was going for that fisherman's bluster. His signature maneuver, the move that Trevor Lee has been using, very successful over the last number of 
months, and Eddie Edwards had it well scouted as we take a look. This was after Gregory Shane Helms was ejected from ringside. And then all of a sudden, we start seeing acrobatic maneuvers we never thought we'd see. Eddie Edwards off the top rope here. He would take out both members of the Helms dynasty. Turn the inside out. Trevor Lee almost had the match won right there. There were so many near falls in this matchup. That double caveman stuff nearly put DJ Z to the match. And then the super kick by Eddie Edwards. The kick out here. This one more time. The throw. The German suplex by Trevor Lee to DJ Z. The top rope Hurricane Rana. And we wonder what was next. What was going to happen after this? What was going to be the knockout? Right here, take a look. Trevor Lee looking for the Fisherman's Buster, Eddie Edwards. He waited. He baited Trevor Lee in. And Eddie Edwards is X Division champion. Good for Eddie Edwards. Congratulations, champ. Tremendous win here for Eddie Edwards. First time in his career, Eddie Edwards has become X Division champion. What else are we going to see here tonight? Slammiversary, live exclusively on pay-per-view. Josh Matthews, ringside with the pro partner. If what we just saw was any indication, wow, what a night it's going to be. Hey, man, this is Slammiversary, as we said before, 14 years. And you know what? When these guys come out here, the athletes, they're going to let it all hang out for our fans. So we've seen one championship change hands. We know that we have our main event tonight. It's knockout or tap out between Drew Galloway and Lashley. I want to put you on the spot early. Put you on the spot right now. Give me a prediction. Who leaves tonight as world champion? Pope stands behind Leonidas, Drew Galloway, all day long, Daddy. We can take a look at Lashley warming up to challenge Drew Galloway. There's the champion. Can't imagine what's going through his mind here tonight as he gets ready to defend the world title. We also have Full Metal Mayhem. Matt and Jeff Hardy going one-on-one. -on -one. It's Broken Matt versus Brother Nero. Your thoughts on this incredible match? Well, hey, man, you know what? We've seen a different Matt Hardy evolve over the past couple of weeks, months, however long it's been. And you know what? I'm looking for Jeff Hardy to get some retribution. Remember, Jeff Hardy jumped just right over there. Oh, yeah. 35, 40 feet. Oh, yeah. Jeff Hardy would crash through Matt Hardy. What's going to happen here tonight at Full Metal Mayhem? And, of course, you have EC3 versus the Miracle. This is going to be an incredible match as well. The only guy that beat EC3, and he has a chance to do it again. Standing by with more on this match is our broadcast colleague, Jeremy Borash. Well, thank you very much, guys. Certainly a lot of buzz going on here backstage. We're talking about all the big matchups. One everybody is talking about features the Miracle, Mike Bennett, against my guest at this time, Ethan Carter III, EC3. My question for you, sir, is this. Tonight, is this the end of the road to redemption? JB, it is Slammiversary Sunday, and on this Sabbath, I shall not rest, because on this day, I culminate my road to redemption. Michael Bennett, you were the very first man to pin me, and that is because you are great. You are exceptional, but Michael Bennett, I told you once, I'll tell you again, your victory over me, it has already defeated you. That was the catalyst I need to become absolute. That is the catalyst I need to become the very best professional wrestler in this place. Michael Bennett, you call yourself God? Nah, man, you're a false prophet. And just like Moses coming down Mount Sinai with two tablets and 10 commandments, I'm coming to that ring with two fists, 10 knuckles, and Old Testament vengeance. Michael, we're about to go to church, and out there, there's a choir, but they're not singing hallelujah, they're not singing Ave Maria, they're singing trouble, 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 trouble. Well, some of them are. There we go. Whoa. Whoa. Perfect. Michael. God, meet your devil and make your peace. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the first inductee into the TNA Wrestling Hall of Fame.
will be made live Tuesday night when we announce the 2016 TNA Hall of Fame inductee. Who will it be? It's going to be a can't miss live impact this upcoming Tuesday night on Pop. The following contest is tag team action. Introducing first, accompanied to the ring by Al Snow, the Tribunal. The Seal Baraka is the gentleman with the beard. Baron Dax is the bald member of the. Like a shaved head, I like bald. It's uh, a shaved head. I think both of the guys are really bald. But yeah, one got a crop cut. That's kind of what we call it back in the hood. I don't expect you to understand that. But you know what I'm thinking about here? He didn't announce Al Snow as coach. It's Coach Al Snow. Again, it's Basile Baraka and Baron Dax. Al Snow is from Ohio, yet he's got a jacket on that says France. Al Snow is sold out to the tribunal, or has he bought in? Well, that remains to be seen. You are welcome. Mercy, mercy. Just like my hero, Donald Trump, is going to make this country great again. I, with the help of these two young men here, I are going to make wrestling great again, starting here tonight. Yes! Magnifique! Now, introducing their opponents, the team of Mahapali Shira and Grado. Al Snow's got a major issue with these two gentlemen right here, Mahapali Shira and Grado. Al Snow has deemed himself the gatekeeper to professional wrestling, and he feels that gentlemen like Grado and Shira just don't belong. Well, you know, I was talking to them earlier, you know, being the journalist that Pope is. Really? You showed up at 7.55. <laughs> hey, 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 look at here we go, the tribunal. Baron Dax and Basile Baraka all over Mahabali Shira. Partner, we know a little bit about the tribunal. They've known each other their entire lives. They've won championships all over the world. Yeah, and you know what? What Pope learned about them is they have a mean streak. And under the tutelage, under the guidance of Coach Al Snow, there's no limit to where that can go. Let me ask you a question, though. What do you think Al Snow's deal is? Why is he so obsessed with keeping people like Shira and Grado out of pro wrestling? That's what makes our sports so different and so unique that these guys can be successful. Yeah, well, you know what? Pope was trying to explain that to you a couple of seconds ago. It's like this. I talked to them, and Coach Snow told Pope that he is about tradition. The tribunal is about tradition, and tonight is going to be tradition versus abomination. Let me ask you another question. What can we do to get that whistle away from Al Snow? Well, hopefully, uh, Mahabali Shira uh, gives Al Snow a swift punch or something and knock it down his throat. Shira was trying to get out of jail here, trying to get out of the corner of the tribunal, make his way over to Grado, but Asil Barak and that's Baron Dax inside the ring. These guys have done a great job so far of isolating Shira. So obviously, tradition is winning right now. Tradition is showing itself because that's something that all the great tag teams have done. And look at Al Snow. Here. Look at that. This is great. This is fair. This is wrestling. This is what Al Snow wants. Using that whistle, this time to his offensive advantage. Oh, gosh. He's blowing it again. Basile Baraka now. Snapmare. Cover. Hooks the outside leg on Shira, who kicks out. Baraka impressively put together. Very sound in the ring. Very aggressive. He keeps his base real low. Yeah. You can see right now he uh, is using that technique on Mahabalu Shira. Shira, the bigger, stronger man, but the way Baraka had him held down there. Well, you know, Shira Ooh. did what he had to do to get out of that maneuver. That was the Jack the Jaw the best way he could. Here comes Baron Dax. What a rivalry that's been building between Al Snow and Grado and Shira. 
And look at this. How often is it that we see, oh my, what a kick to the face of Sheer about Baraka. How often is it that we see Sheer in this position? Cover here by Baron Dax and a kick out there by Mahabali Shira. I believe this is the first time that any of these four men competing at Slammiversary. Imagine 14 years in the making. Yeah. You know who was a part of the very first Slammiversary? Tell me. Keith Mitchell in the truck. Keith Mitchell in the truck, absolutely. Everybody knows him. Hobbly Shearer now. Trying to mount a comeback here against Baron Dax. Oh, nice takedown there by Dax. And a nice mount, and just sort of laying in a flurry of punches. That's how you do it. You can see Shearer can't get his, his guard up there, and Baron Dax able to go to work. Makes the quick tag here to Basile Baraka. One championship has already changed hands tonight. Eddie Edwards is the new X Division champion. Live at Slammiversary, cover here by the Seal. Baraka hooks the outside leg and a kick out. The longer this match is going, partner, yeah. I don't think Grado's been involved once. Not one time they have successfully isolated Shira. And they have kept them in their corner or here in this point in the middle of the ring. And if they continue to do that, they're going to put away the big guy. We thank all of you for joining us exclusively on pay-per-view tonight for Slammiversary. I can say that Slammiversary is trending worldwide right now via Twitter. And look, Shira! Sky high! Sky high! By Mahabali Shira! Can Mahabali Shira make the tag? The tag, can he make the cover? If he put his hand on him, he may have him. No, he's got to make the tag. He's got to get the fresh man, Grado, in this match. You know how many people Mahabali Shira has defeated with the sky high? It could have been a done deal. Grado wants in this match, and Shira made, wait, the tag wasn't made. Oh, but wow. Baron Dax pulled Grado off the apron. Smart move by Dax. It may have not been the right thing to do, but it was at the right moment. And now look at all the real estate that Mahabali Shira needs to make up. He's back in the corner of the tribunal, and Al Snow will not stop with the whistle. I to see somebody get to you. If it took a whistle, I would have did it a long time ago. And Grado, not waiting for the tag. Grado's seen enough. Look at the shenanigans by the tribunal. And Grado sends Shira to their side of the ring, makes the tag, and here comes Grado. That wasn't a traditional tag, but it worked. Grado's getting the job done. Grado going to work here on Baraka and Dax. The tribunal being rocked here by Grado. Follow with a big elbow and another one. Imagine how embarrassed and humiliated Al Snow will be if the Tribunal lose this match tonight. Al's up on the apron. And he's blown it. Hit that stomach down his throat. That whistle. Grado may do just that. Grado's got the whistle. But you know what? There's no more use now. Al Snow is living. And the Tribunal's back up. Oh, all the fun and games are over. That might be. Basile Baraka and Baron Dax. Oh, and Grado just got the shoulder up. I, I'm impressed. I'm surprised and impressed. Al Snow's in shock. How did Grado kick out a two? I thought it was a done deal, partner. Me too. Somehow Grado, and he just popped off the, off the canvas there to get his shoulder up. Baron Dax got caught there. Dax looks like a powerhouse. So does Mahabali Shira. Oh, a spring hold by Shira. Where the hell did that come from? Shira off the top rope. And he's on fire now. And Mahabali Shira is taking out the tribunal. I told you, Slammiversary, 14 years, Daddy, we can see anything tonight. It brings out the best and our amazing athletes. And look at Grado and Shira, two men who have found a common bond. And they're teeing off on the tribunal. <laughs> Grados, Shira with a pair of elbows, Daddy. And a cartwheel from Grado. <laughs> this is not the time for that. No. The celebration was early and it got shut down by the tribunal. Grado and Shira. They thought they had everything in, under control here and now. Basile Barakin, Baron Dax. Sure. Oh, what a move by Grado. Cover. Could be a huge upset now. Snow's on the apron with a whistle. Uh, wait, uh, how did he get the whistle? Uh, I, I can't believe it. <laughs> it might be his number. Oh! Al Snow travels with a cover, pair. Cover, cover, and a kick out. 
So close. If that count would have happened earlier without the distraction of Al Snow, it could have been over. Al well, Snow knew that. That's why he popped up on the apron to provide the distraction. And now Baron Dax blindsiding Grado here in the tribunal. Uh oh. Station in the six sided ring and covered by Baron Dax to Grado and the Tribunal secure the victory after that guillotine. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner for the match, the Tribunal. So Al Snow's boys, the Seal Baraka and Baron Dax, with Al Snow's assistance partner, got the win. And you know what? Coach Snow said he was going to come out here and tradition was going to go over abomination. And you know what? He may have well been right because right now their hands are raising victory. The Tribunal has pulled out the victory against Shira and Grotto. And Al Snow again acting like uh, just won the gold medal. They just won the gold medal. They just won the World Tag Team titles. I mean, Eddie Edwards was thrilled when he won the X Division Championship. He didn't celebrate. Look at Al Snow's crying here. This is absolutely ridiculous. That way? Back. Hey, hey guys. Yeah. Braxton. How are you? You guys know where the stage is? It's right through here. The stage that way? I have no idea where I am. That way? Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Foley on Pop TV. And if you're not, then sorry. I'm, hey. Sorry, sorry guys. So, sorry. That's my line. Yeah. You know, sorry about your damn luck? Yeah, yeah, my, my, right, my bad. Hang on a second. All right, you got Braxton. Braxton. James Storm, man. Nice, Jake. Good to, nice to meet you, man. <laughs> you all right? You yeah. ain't nervous or anything, you all right? <laughs> hey, <laughs> great debut last week, man. Thank Seriously, you. it's always good to get that first win on your belt. It yeah. took me a couple months to get that first win, but once you get that first win, you feel good. Listen, listen man, you, you've been here since day one, the very first slam anniversary. It's, it's because of guys like you, my guys like me can be here, so thank So you. now you're saying I'm old. No. That's what you're saying. You're no, saying no, no. I'm the dinosaur now. No, no, no. I was in your position when I was like, all right, that old fart. All right. you, know, you know what I mean. You're taking it the wrong way. I got you. Hey, man. You got a second? Yeah. Come here. Can oh, we talk? Yeah, just a second. Cool. Sorry, guys. I'll be right back. My bad. That's my line. <laughs> Come on. Thanks. The knockouts division is broken. I am the only one that can change it. No one wants to hear you talk, Maria. They want to see you fight. People like you don't tell me what to do. People like you. People like you don't realize who you're talking to. All the knockouts are down, and there's Maria. Maria's closed the cage door. Maria just locked the door and threw down the key and left. How cold-blooded is Maria? Maria, I'm nothing like you, because you're just a crazy-ass bitch. Getting in the ring? That will never, ever happen. Gail Kim and Hopper sweep Jade from behind. Get on! That Maria oh, with a championship off of Gail Kim. Jade's gonna take advantage, and Jade is gonna become Knockouts Champion. Climb the ladder, secure the contract, and you're in control of the Knockouts division. Maria picks the ankle, and down goes Gail Kim, and what a shot. And those two are out of here, oh, not so fast. Oh, Rosemary, Decay has Gail Kim. Maria has the contract, and Maria is in control of the Knockouts. From the first day that you stepped foot into this company, I wanted a match with you. At Slammiversary, it is going to be the worst night of your life. When I kick your ass. I can kick your ass right now. Oh, and a blindsided attack by Sienna on Gail Kim. Gail slips through, Sienna down, and Gail Kim is victorious. And Maria Fleming, hands on, hands on. And Gail's finally got what she wants. And Sienna, quickly there to run interference. And now Maria will get her hands dirty. Look at this. You know that Gail Kim wants to get her hands on Maria. And you know that Gail would eventually love to get the Knockouts Championship back. Wow. Thunderous clothesline. And they're grabbing another steel chair. No, no. Oh, man. No. Uh, I have to be OK for some OK, sir. All right, relax. The following contest is Knockouts Action. Introducing first, making your way to the ring from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Gail Kim. She's a 5'10 
two-time knockouts champion. Dale Kim is out for vengeance tonight after being attacked by Maria and Sienna and Ali in a vicious beatdown that has a lot of us questioning the health status of Gail Kim and her knee. But Gail Kim's out here for action. Hunter Maria has a broken hand. We found that out late Thursday night that Maria will not be able to compete, but this is what went down. It was a mixed tag team matchup last Tuesday. Gail Kim picked up the win after Maria didn't want to compete. And then Sienna would go after Gail and the knee. Kim's never gonna back down from a fight. Maria and her apprentice, Allie. this. Look at my hand. I, I didn't want this. I didn't. I wanted to come out here tonight and kick your ass. But unfortunately, because of my injury, the match is off. First off, Allie, you need to shut your mouth. This is between Maria and myself. And Maria, the only faker around here is you. You've been talking yourself out of this match before it even happened. You're nothing but a liar. tonight with my knee despite that. So you're gonna get yourself in this ring before I make you. Gail Kim's ready to go. Gail Kim wants to get her hands on Maria. And here's Impact Executive William Corgan. Gail. It's true, her hand is broken, it's legitimate. I got the x-rays right here. You may not care, you may not care, but we do. Her hand is broken, the x-rays have been reviewed by TNA management, heck, my own personal physician reviewed these documents. Let's take a look. Now I'm no doctor, but that's a break. That's a break. Listen, Gail, here's the good news. The minute Maria is cleared to wrestle, you will get your match. And I'm sorry, Gail, but my doctor said it's gonna take a very long time for my hand to heal. And I may never be able to wrestle again, so you may never get that match, so no, I'm just gonna... No. Billy, you need to make this match happen. I deserve this match. I earned this match. She cost me the knockout title. There's gonna be a match tonight, and it's gonna happen now. No, 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 no. Sienna has the title match tonight. That's true, that's true. Sienna's gonna face Jade for the title. 
But this is Slammiversary. And these fans deserve something special, don't you agree? So with the power invested in me, it's gonna be a triple threat match. Sienna, Jade, and Gail Kim for the knockouts title. And that match starts right now. It's a fair call by William Corgan. It's a, fa it's a great call, what are you talking about? Give Gail Kim an opportunity to compete for the knockouts championship. Absolutely, if there's anyone deserving of it, it's Gail Kim. Well, if Maria can't compete, Maria has a broken hand, and you can show me later in the x-ray where that break Introducing was. challenger number two, Sienna! Sienna's the enforcer. Oh, and she's not looking happy. Sienna's in a bad, bad mood. The knockout who ended the career of Velvet Sky, a force to be reckoned with from Detroit, Michigan, Sienna. Imagine if Sienna could go on to become knockout's champion here tonight. Imagine the power that Maria would then possess. She is the leader of the knockouts, and she would have the knockouts champion by her side. Uh, and you know what? We all know that, that wherever the championship title goes, the power often goes with it. So yes, you have a point. It's your opportunity. Tough test, though, for Sienna. And now, introducing the TNA Knockouts Champion, Jade. It was April 5th that Jade won the Knockouts title. She's shed her dollhouse persona and has been dominant ever since. Jane has found a plethora of ways to dismantle her opponents. Can Jane somehow get past Sienna and Gail Kim and retain the Knockouts Championship? It was a three-way match partner that she won the title in, so she gets this environment. Absolutely. And if there's anyone who understands the layout of this matchup, it is the champion. Jade, and you know what? She's going to be keeping an eye on both of her competitors. Going to be interesting to see how it plays out from the start, though. Well, we saw a fatal four-way match for the X Division Championship, and the championship changed hands there. Eddie Edwards is the new X Division Champion, and now a impromptu three-way dance for the Knockouts Championship. I was saying, let's see how it plays out, and you know what? It's playing out just the way Pope expected it to. Huh? Sienna got caught here by Jade and Gale. Kim, look at the power of Jade and Gale together. Oh, a little high tie slam there by both Jade and Gale. Look at this teamwork. Nice assist. Standing moonsaults. Gale Kim was the first ever knockouts champion. If she wins tonight, she will tie Angelina Love for the most reigns ever at six. And right now, I just think both Gail Kim and Jay just wants to get rid of the big monster that is Sienna. Sienna hanging on to the middle rope there. Now Jade, crucifix by Jade. Sienna down and rolls free. And now Gail Kim, well, you knew this was coming. Gail going after Jade, trying to get the victory. It's one fall to a finish for the Knockouts Championship. Body scissors here by Gail Kim and Sienna with a boot. And a beautiful wheelbarrow suplex out of that by Jade to Gail Kim. Cover here by Sienna and a kick out at two. I was informed moments ago by William Corgan in my ear, told me one fall to a finish. One fall to a finish. Yep. Well, you know what? Sienna right now is up to her feet. And she's putting one big boot in the throat of Jade. But here comes Gail again. Gail Kim was put into this matchup. She wanted to go one-on-one -on -one with Maria. And Gail, again, we saw what happened. We showed you what happened to the knee of Gail Kim last Tuesday night on Impact. Down pop, it was a calculated attack on Maria and Sienna. Those steel chairs right to the knee, but Gail said, look, I'm going to compete. I'm a competitor. Well, one thing about it, partner, when you get inside the ring, off the time when you have an injury, even a nagging injury, off the time the adrenaline gets to flowing and you forget about it, and we just witnessed that when Gail Kim attempted to lift up uh, Sienna and the weight, the pressure caused her knee to buckle. Gail right now tied up in the tree of woe, so it's become a one-on-one -on -one match. 
between Sienna and Jade momentarily. Sienna trying to use her strength and power advantage here on Jade, trying to wear her down and become knockouts champion here at Slammiversary. Yeah, everyone's trying to leave their mark. I told you earlier about Slammiversary, the rich history here. Our broadcast colleague, Jeremy Borash, also a part of the very first Slammiversary. Absolutely. JB, a man of many crafts. Shout out to him on this great anniversary, if you will. He had his cold slam anniversary that we know of. The celebration. Oh, okay, I get it. Enough. Right, well, you know what, Dad? I got to explain Just this stuff. Just put a you know? button on it. I got to explain it. Sienna here trying to go to work on Kale Kim. Here comes Jade from behind. And Jade got caught with a high back elbow there by Sienna. I see you hanging out with Sienna a lot. You're always around the knockouts, always trying to learn. And look at this. Look at the power. Look at the strength. Sienna takes out the champion, Jade, and Gail Kim. Double Samoan drop by the enforcer of the cabinet of Maria. And Sienna holds the ring here in the center of the six-sided ring live at Slammiversary. And who will Sienna go after first? And Maria and Ali still watching from the entrance way. Funny, you always keep an eye on Pope when he's around the knockouts. Pope's doing his job. Uh -oh. And you know what? We've seen uh -oh. this before. This we have in Gail Kim. And Jade tries. Oh, nice move there by Jade. Takes the momentum of Sienna. Face first of the steel. Jade and Gail Kim both there, yeah. making the same move. And you know what? You be talking about that four-way match, and we talked about the champion at the time, uh, Trevor Lee, and how unique he is, and how he's a hybrid, and how he's a new breed. When it comes to the knockout division, the same thing can be said about the uh, TNA knockouts champion, Jay. No countouts in a match like this. You can see champion and both challengers stirring. Who will get to their feet first? Who will get back inside the ring? Will it be Gail Kim, the first ever knockouts champion? Will it be the current reigning champion, Jade, or will it be the enforcer, Sienna? Looks like all three got in the same time. Absolutely. You want to be the first one to get to your feet. But you want to get in the ring, right? Because yeah. we talk about this so, ma so much in matches like this. It's isolate one and turn it into a one-on-one -on -one match. All three back in the ring. And Sienna trying to create some separation here. Here comes Gail Kim. One thing about it, she may be stronger, but Gail might be the quickest. And Gail sent all the way to the outside. Gail Kim is down, and Jade open palm strikes. A flurry of offense to Sienna. Sienna misses wildly. Jade off the other side. What a DDT! What a DDT by Jade! Flies into the cover, hooks the outside leg, and Gail Kim breaks it up in two. Springboard from the middle by Jade. Nice DDT it was. It could have been it. Jade has certainly been a tremendous knockouts champion. Despite what Maria may say as the leader of the knockouts, and Jade now up on the top rope. Gail Kim right there, and here we go. Gail trying to reach Jade up there. Gail Kim's got to be careful, has to protect her knee, but instead, a top rope Hurricane Rana. Tremendous offense by Gail Kim. And here comes Sienna. Sienna with a clothesline in the center of the ring. And now Jade is perched on top of the rope. What, what is she going to do? Look at Jade. A Hurricane Rana to Sienna. Jade is in control. Jay might be setting up for that. Her finishing maneuver. Package pile driver coming. Package pile driver countered. And Sienna. Sienna was in harm's way there. She knew she had to get oh, out of it. The same move that ended the career of Velvet Sky. AK-47 by Sienna. Sienna could become knockouts champion. And then he defeat by Gail. Gail Kim, a six-time knockouts champion, and she pins Sienna. And there's Allie. Allie breaks it up. Gail had this match won. Allie's going to pay the there price. You go. Get it, girl. Get your hands on her, Gail. Gail Kim has Maria in her sights. This is what Gail wanted all along. A one-on-one -on -one match with Maria. Oh, wow. 
chaos and bedlam here with the Knockouts Championship on the line. And Ali sends the title into the hands of C who the Marty Bell. Marty, the longtime friend of what the hell was that? I what just happened? Marty just hit hit Jade with something. Some sort of a weapon. And Sienna, as a result, is Knockouts Champion. The winner of the match. And new TNA Knockouts Champion, Sienna! We're gonna try to put the pieces of what just transpired together here and try to get a look at whatever's in the hands of Marty Bell that knocked out Jade. Sienna, she went after Marty. Sienna had no idea, just thinking this rationally, yeah. that Marty Bell was gonna pop into the ring from out of nowhere. Well, I mean, with the association between Marty and Jane, uh, the first thing I thought is what she was gonna come help. Yeah, me too. Hey, Marty may have seen enough of the shenanigans, but let's take another look here at how this all played out, how this all transpired as Sienna is Knockouts champion. There's Marty. Sienna misses with the championship, and then Marty turns and blasts Jane right in the back. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. I'm just confused. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm confused over this as well. I mean, we can just tell you what we saw and what you all saw here at Slammiversary, and as a result, we have a new Knockouts champion. Will we crown a new world champion later tonight? Standing by with more, JB. Here tonight, and believe me, the night is far, far from over. It's Slam Aversary, and our main event tonight for the World Heavyweight Championship. The champion, Drew Galloway, defends against my guest at this time. The Destroyer Lashley tonight. Winner to be determined by knockout or tap out. Yeah, JV, you know, you talk about this big fight feel, right? There's only one way this main event can end. Tell them. Tell them how that is. Tell them again how this can possibly end. Knock out or tap out. Knock out or tap out, that's exactly right. And once again, Drew Galloway, you're making mistakes. See, I've been playing you like a little puppet, just like I did to Curtin, like I do to everyone else. I got you into my world. You understand? See, you've been traveling around this world, like you said, beating people up, but now you're coming into my world. Something that I've been doing forever is fighting people. So like you said, knock out or tap out. That's what's gonna happen. Now you, JB, get some practice tonight of what you're gonna say. Tell them who the new world champion is gonna be after tonight. Tell them, come on, tell them. What are the match? Announce me as the new heavyweight champion. Come on, JB, right now, right now. Right now. The winner and new world heavyweight champion. Let's come on. Just. Announce me as the new heavyweight champion. The winner and new world heavyweight champion, Lashley. Thank you. Sorry about your damn luck. Now Lashley has become nothing more than a bully. And imagine what the locker room and the scene will be like if Lashley does go on to become a world champion later tonight. Here's the cowboy. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Leapers for Tennessee, the Cowboy, James Storm. And as always, the Cowboys come into the ring, and he's on the Bulls' Cruiser. Not sure who uh, James Storm is facing here tonight in the slam anniversary, but it's always great to see the bearded outlaw. Yeah, that means you have the uh, TNA original there, brother. Somebody who's been here since the beginning. You can't have a slam anniversary without James Storm. Another person on my short list of individuals who were a part of the very first slam anniversary. The bearded outlaw, the cowboy, the former world champion, second time TNA world tag team champion, James Storm. Yeah, I, I just said that. I can't people don't listen to what you say. They pay attention to what goes on over here. Thank you.
And this man has been at every one of them and been here since day one. I told you, Josh. You know, Gave a bunch of punk kids an opportunity on Wednesday nights. Punk kids like Abyss, AJ Styles, <laughs> and of course the cowboy, Jane Storm. <laughs> and we, we seized that opportunity because everybody always told me, Jane Storm, you can never do it. You'll never make it. Because you too country, you got too much slang in your twang. You don't follow the rules. You don't walk that straight line. And I said, well, no crap. Because God gave me this life. And I live it the way that I want to because when I'm dead and gone, they're going to say, that SOB did it his way. And I always learned if you don't live your life, live your life the way that you want to live it, you just need to get the hell out of the way. So now I want to take this opportunity after I've been raising hell for 14 years right here in Orlando. And I want to be able to sit at home. opportunity and I seized it because there's a lot of guys back there that I saw they need is an opportunity because hell 14 years ago y'all didn't know James Storm but hell now all y'all won't drink beer with me <laughs> so This opportunity to <laughs> introducing his opponent from Buffalo, New York, Braxton Sutter. Braxton Sutter got tremendous reviews in his debut match on Impact Wrestling. He's a young and hungry and humble individual and Braxton Sutter made no bones about it, partner. He wants to be world champion. And how do you start your quest to become a world champion? You get in the ring for the former world champion, someone of the caliber of James Storm, and you try to get a victory and take him to the limit. You heard what James Storm told Braxton Sutter earlier. You won your debut match. It took Storm a couple of months to do that. And Braxton Sutter, how does it feel after you get that first one under your belt? You know what, man? I don't think all the butterflies are gone now that BS, if you will, is in the ring. But you know what? You're in there with a former world champion. You're in there with James Storm. And I guarantee you, those butterflies have returned. Will this be a learning experience for Braxton Sutter, or will it be a springboard to bigger and better things in Impact Wrestling? Well, it will indeed be a learning experience, no doubt. But it can be that catalyst to springboard him to future success here. We'll see if Braxton Sutter can escape the victory here against James Storm. And you heard Storm talking about it. 14 years, yeah. he knows the six-sided ring as well as anybody. Absolutely. Here from the beginning, all the way through, man, James Storm. Uh, it's an all-around guy, well accomplished, and you know what? He won that title right here in the six side of the ring, and he's looking to put away Brian. Come on, teach Alexa, Alexa to be yes. Braxton Sutter keeping pace here with the Cowboy, James Storm, the Bearded Outlaw, two championship matches so far. We have a new X Division champion in Eddie Edwards, and we have a new knockouts champion in Siena. Yeah, and you know what? That's the type of stuff that happens. We're talking about Slammiversary, biggest event of the summer for us. And, and oh, we had a cover there. And that type of thing happened, you know? It happens. We got two champions, man. We still got some more to come. 
Cannot wait to see what's going to go down later tonight. You heard from Lashley moments ago. He's very confident. He already wants JB to introduce him as the new world champion. And nice shoulder tackle there by Braxton Sutter. Oh, beautiful hip toss by the Cowboy James Storm, followed up by an arm drag. Deep arm drag by James Storm. Is it much different, partner, competing on impact, on pop, and then coming here to Slammiversary on pay-per-view in front of the entire world for Braxton Sutton. And, and, and you know what? That's what I was going to say, man. It's about the stage, the stage that uh, Sutter is on right now. So it's a lot more pressure on him, especially being in there with James Storm. You know, Braxton Sutter, he's traveled all over the world. He's been competing for quite a few years. A young man from Buffalo, New York. Well, you know what? I'm sure he's reveling at the opportunity. I know he enjoyed being in there. Big drop kick there by the Cowboy, James Storm, and Sutter. Thinking about it here just a little bit. Now, Sutter is no pushover. You know, it's amazing to me, though, that Braxton Sutter, he said it uh, the first time that you saw him. He shouldn't be getting his break this late, but yet he's still humble and he's still hungry and he still wants to succeed. There's no chip on his shoulder. Well, you know what? After the night, he might want to put one on there. And definitely, if he don't have one, he's probably going to get one as James Storm continues to teach him a lesson that's not going to be easy. Reversal here by Braxton Sutter. Storm goes up and over. Leap frog there. Oh, big shot by Storm. I think it says a lot about the character of Braxton Sutter that he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, well, that's all fine and well. I mean, Ooh. you, you got to be humble to a certain extent, but you also got to have that chip, something to prove that's going to propel you further. I still think Sutter has an edge to him. He's just very, he knows how to handle himself like a professional. Shot to the back of the head there by the Cowboy, James Storm. Storm built up some steam in the neck breaker. You know what? <laughs> Again, partner, I'm not trying to debate with you here. We can debate being, all night. But, but being humble, you know, the way that Saxon has been. Oh! What a move by Storm! Cover hooks the outside leg, and Sutter kicks out at two. And that's not going to get you to where you want to go, okay? You're going to have to, at some point, Sutter in this matchup, he's going to have to turn, he's going to have to look Storm in his face, and he's going to have to slap the taste right out of his mouth. Let's we'll see if Braxton Sutter has it in him. I think he's... Holding himself very well so far in this match with the Cowboy, James Storm. And Storm now trying to build more offense. Caught the boot there of Sutter, but not that one. Shot right to the side of the face. And Braxton Sutter, he's got James Storm. Nice offense by Sutter. Oh, wow. Flies into the cover, hooks the outside leg, and Storm gets the shoulder up at two. Did you notice the velocity and the snap in which Sutter executed that maneuver? Tremendous torque yeah. by Braxton Sutter as he continues to try to build more offense here against James Storm. Reversal by Storm and Sutter staying one step ahead of the Cowboy. Well, he's rocking right now. He's rolling this Sutter, and now he's on the top rope, and he's saying, let's go, Storm. Confidence starting to grow, and Braxton Sutter perched up on the top rope now has Storm in his sights. Oh, what a crossbody. James Storm down, hooks the outside leg, and a kick out of two. Very close, but I like what Sutter's doing. He's right back on Storm. Trying to keep Storm in close proximity. And Storm, oh, power slam, hooks one leg, great finds the other, and Storm breaks the hold and the pinning opportunity by Braxton Sutter. Sutter has to figure out right now how to keep Storm down. How tight was that cover, though? He, he hooked one leg, he great find the other, and his hands were locked. And that's the way he has to do it to pull out the victory. Braxton Sutter was digging deep there, doesn't plan to hit his mind at all that Storm was able to kick out. You can answer whenever you want. Well, you, you know what, partner? We're still watching the action here, and I wanted to see what was about to transpire because he's looking for a tornado to DDT. Got thrown off by James Storm. High back elbow right to the jaw. And Storm gets his balance back. He's got Braxton Sutter looking for a DDT here. Sutter counters. Storm counters. Oh, and a suplex into the turnbuckle. Yeah, Storm landed right on the back of his neck. He might be out. Braxton Sutter cover here, hooks the outside leg, and Storm kicked out at two. Love the body placement of Sutter. You saw how he floated over and put himself yeah. between Storm and the ropes. Yeah, well, you know, Sutter's a professional, man. He, he's been around. Like you said, he's no spring chicken. He knows how this game works. And yet still, James Storm was able to kick out and stay in this matchup. What's been a very competitive matchup. And right now, Sutter may be looking for that, that one maneuver. Ooh. 
bicycle kick there by Braxton Sutter. Trying to deliver more offense. Storm counters. Love blow by James Storm. That might be it. Storm taking his time, though. Well, he's wiping off the boot. You know what that means. You know what he's about to call for. Might be taking a little too long. Storm may be looking for last call on Braxton Sutter. Caught him right on the jaw. Yes, sir. Cover by James Storm in a victory Storm. for the Bearded Outlaw. Your damn luck. So James Storm secures the victory here. James Storm, who wants to do some celebrating. It may have been the last call for Rats and Son of the Mars Open. Absolutely. You gotta know you can't have slap a person with a good old James Storm beer bash. And look, he got two of them. And James Storm respects and appreciates the effort here tonight yeah. of Braxton Sutter. Great show of sportsmanship. You don't know a damn thing. Very courteous of James Storm. Yeah, you love to see that. You love to see that after a competitive match. James Storm got the better of Braxton Sutter here tonight. But there were moments in this match, Parker, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked like Sutter was going to take away a victory. Well, I mean, he was rocking and he, ro he was rolling and he almost pulled it out, but not quick enough. James Storm victorious, but a celebration here at Slammiversary for the Cowboy and Braxton Sutter. What a night it's been so far. JB is standing by with more on Slammiversary. All right, thank you very much, Josh. Big win, of course, for the Cowboy James Storm here tonight at Slammiversary. We've had two title matches and two new champions thus far here tonight. Up next, my guest is the king of the mountain champion. Janet, dummy, I'm talking now. Let me talk to you. You were so excited about two champions changing. You think it's going to be three for three? <laughs> it's not. But let me tell you what it's going to be. See, JB, I don't need any kind of an introduction anymore because anybody watching Slammiversary right now can see that I'm top of the heap, that I'm the cock of the walk, and quite frankly, I'm the namer of dummies, and I'm Eli Drake. But let's put it this way. What I am more than anything is the king of the mountain champion, and Bram's not. But I'll tell you a couple things that Bram is. He's a dangerous man. Bram is a crazy man. He's an intense man. He might just be crazy enough to put his life on the line to take this piece of tin off of me. But don't get lost in the sauce. Because if anybody thinks that he's going to take this, well, then Bram is a couple other things. He is 100% moron idiot. He is, per he is a cross-eyed half-wit, and he is dummy, yeah. Eli Drake stands here as a perpetual motion machine of badassery, and I'll tell you this, Bram, if you're looking for the end of Eli Drake carrying this around, forever is a mighty long time, and that's not an insult, that is just a fact of life. I'm very, very proud right now to announce the second inductee into the TNA Wrestling Hall of Fame, and that is Kurt Angle. I'm fed up, dismissing the competition. You're hopeless, I'm trash, they're ambition. Listen, you want a class on tradition? On one condition, forget the best of the century. Talk about the best of all time, you better mention me. Who will be the 2016 the TNA ever Hall ever of Fame inductee? Find out Tuesday night live when we make history. So many times you see triple and double the same. is for the King of the Mountain Championship. Introducing first, the challenger, Bram. Bram was King of the Mountain Champion. Eli Drake had a feast or fire contract 
for a future King of the Mountain Championship matchup that Eli Drake was able to cash in anytime he wanted. He took advantage of Bram. I mean, that's the nature of Feast of Fire. And Eli Drake would go on to become King of the Mountain Champion. And Bram regained the title here tonight at Slammiversary. The Chesterfield flag looks ready to go. Looks ready for Eli Drake. Eli Drake. And now, introducing his opponents. He is the king of the mountain champion. It's just a fact of life. Eli Drake. Eli Drake does not lack confidence at all. He calls himself the namer of dummies. He's the king of the mountain champion. He's very outspoken, but he can get it done inside the ring partner as well. And that's the reason he is the king of the mountain Whoa. champion. Uh -oh. There's a lot more other things he was about to get done. How much adrenaline is going through the body of Eli Drake? Well, you, you mean now or when he first came out? I'm I mean, think about what just happened there and Eli Drake. Yeah. He could be, look, this could be nerves. A lot of things going on in the mind of Eli Drake. I mean, you get inside the ring with the Chesterfield leg, you get inside the ring with Bram. Uh, I'm going to be nervous. And you know what? He's making sure his nerves are under control. He got back up there again. Make sure you got it together. And think about this. The last time Eli Drake was in the ring with Bram when he beat him, Bram had just had a match with Lashley. Yeah. It was pick your poison, and Drew Galloway handpicked Bram to face Lashley, and then Eli Drake would come in, cash in. Eli knows that he's got a target on his back, and Bram is gunning and coming and looking for the King of the Mountain champion. Well, let's just talk straight for a second. Okay, Eli Drake is the champion. We know that he got cashed in. He won the championship from... Bram, the maniacal nutcase, when he was already uh, 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 had a hard match. But you know what? Even though Eli Drake is fresh, any man that comes face to face with the maniacal nutcase, Bram, he's going to be nervous. Bram, the human nightmare, the Chesterfield play. What is in the uh, the nostrils, the nose of, of Eli Drake? Your guess is a good as mine. Right now, Eli. I mean, is it, is this, I mean, I'm not kidding here. It, does it help his breathing? Is, is that what it is? Almost like one of those breathe right strips? I don't know if you're the journalist. Just look it up. But you're the former athlete. I don't know. The last thing I would have in my nose when I'm wrestling is any other object than hair. Cat and mouse game being played here by Eli Drake and Bram. Eli's trying to stay away from the Chesterfield plague. It's a sound offense, a sound plan. But eventually, Eli's going to have to get inside the ring with Bram. Bram wants to keep it in the fumble, keep it tight. Oh! Bram just want to knock the, knock the head off of Eli Drake. And Bram looking for the brighter side of suffering, the signature maneuver of Bram and Eli Drake. He knew what was coming, and he got out of harm's way. Yeah, Drake on the outside again. You know, stalling time. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to uh, get Bram off his locker even more and throw him to the outside. Bram bringing Eli Drake. Oh, thought he was going to bring him back inside the ring. And Eli Drake says, not so fast. And do you like the strategy of Eli? Do you like what he's doing here? Well, Eli's very cunning. He's very smart. But that wasn't enough to keep down Bram. Close out over the top rope. There goes Eli. Eli thought that he had done enough to get inside the ring with Bram instead. Powerful clothesline over the top rope by Bram. And right now, again, Eli Drake is on the outside of the ring. Just give me that. Just to this title. Yeah, Eli Drake has the King of the Mountain Championship, senior official, TNA Hall of Famer Earl Hebner trying to keep Bram at bay. He's your second day. And Eli's taking a walk. We'll do this another time. Maybe next month. No, no, no. Eli is, uh, He's taking a walk. He's taking his championship and going home. Well, you know what? I don't think Bram is going to stand for that. Well, he, Bram better hurry. Eli Drake's yeah. trying to get to the locker room, and Eli misses wildly. Oh. Bram does not. Again, just a ploy. Mind games by yeah. Eli Drake, in my opinion. Just go back yeah. by Bram. Bram holding up the King of the Mountain Championship. Yeah. Wanted to sucker Bram out there and catch him with that King of the Mountain Championship title. Oh, Hebner's letting him go here, letting him play with a championship on the line. Look at, look at the intensity in the eyes of Bram. Not just that, I mean, he looks happy. You know why? This is Brown's playing field. Loves to be a fight. Bram loves to compete. 
Oh, he loves the outside of the ring action. That's why I was so surprised earlier by what Eli Drake was doing, trying to get Bram to the outside. That's Bram. Bram's so, he loves it out there. Absolutely. He thrives in chaos. It's territory. And Bram now. I'm gonna work on Eli Drake. Oh, face first off the steel steps. Ah, Bram is dishing out punishment. Imagine how Bram felt after Eli Drake cashed in his Feast of Fire contract. And then the, the champagne toasts of Eli Drake all over the impact zone. <laughs> Eli certainly didn't do himself to many people. And Bram reversal. Oh, Eli Drake. Hard in the steel guardrail. Face of Eli Drake riding in pain. Oh, at least the nose piece is gone. Whatever that was. Oh. Eli still down, and Bram is rearranging the protective mats here at ringside. It's nothing but a concrete floor underneath those ringside mats. See the referee all happy and say, hey, no, 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 we can't do this. We're, 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 we're treading dangerous waters right now. Oh, this is getting more and more dangerous for Eli Drake by the side of suffering. Eli trying to hang on. Oh, big body shot. Brown may be broken in half after taking that backdrop by Eli Drake onto the concrete floor. What a reversal. What a counter by Eli Drake. A savvy move by the current King of the Mountain champion. I, Bram, Bram may be hurt. Take a look at this. Bram was looking for the brighter side of suffering. Eli held on, and then what a back body drop. Hard, hard landing. Eli Drake. Oh, oh, there he goes again. Again, Eli Drake. Lost his balance, lost his cool, lost his focus. Eli can think about it for a while. Bram's down. Bram may not answer the 10 count. Yeah, I mean, if Eli Drake, yeah, I mean, that's that's what I would be doing. I'd probably be saying, hey, just count, count fast. Let's get the match over with. You know, Bram is uh, right out here near us. Three. He's still down. He hasn't moved. You can see him yeah. with his fingers there, trying to make sure that he's got feeling in his extremities. Three. 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 He's just trying to get the blood, the circulation going. Earl oh, Hedner's at seven. Now at eight. <laughs> Is Bram going to make it back up? I don't know. I don't think so. Bram may get counted out. He's got one second to go, and Bram beats the count, gets back in, and Eli Drake cover. Wise move by Eli Drake. Locks his hands, and Bram escapes. Last ditch effort by Manaka, not case Bram. Eli Drake. And Bram counters. Bram still bringing the fight. Eli Drake will be for blunt force trauma. That's a signature maneuver. If Eli hits that, he may retain his championship. That was a nice neck breaker out of the buckle, though. Absolutely. The namer of dummies. Yeah. Love fact a lot. My favorite talk shows. <laughs> it would be. Oh, double clothesline. Both men down. Double call on the double clothesline. And both champion and challenger are down. Very telling moment in this matchup. Who will get to their feet first? Well, you have to believe that it's going to be Eli Drake. How much damage has been done? Absolutely, especially after everything that Bram has endured. That back drop still in the back of folks' head. Both men back up, and here we go. It wouldn't be a Bram match if it didn't break down to a brawl. And Eli Drake is right there matching Bram with every shot. Neither man backing down. I don't think it's a smart thing to do on Eli's part. We saw the knees of Eli Drake buckle there momentarily, but Eli with a shot to the midsection. Reversal by Bram. Ooh. Straight to the bottom of the jaw. Those oh, punches straight to coming back. And Bram with a running forearm. That's number two. And Bram! There's a high Hollywood race like knee by Bram. Can the Chester Field play go for a cover? Eli misses wildly and boom! Oh, a power bomb! He threw Eli Drake so high up into the sky, he almost lost him. Eli Drake almost went over the head of Bram, and then Bram grabbed him and just drove him into the canvas. What does that say about the power of Bram? Brighter side of suffering coming for the third time in this match. Bram's going to get his championship back, and Eli Drake fell all the way to the floor. 
over. He connected. Bram has to go out there. He has to get on the outside of the ring and put Eli Joy back inside. The placement of that brighter side of suffering right there near the edge of the ring may have saved Eli Drake's championship. No doubt, no doubt. We've seen too many people fall to the brighter side of suffering. Yeah. Eli Drake is still down, and Eli Drake, I guess, can thank gravity yeah. for still being the King of the Mountain champion. I agree with Brandon. Get in there, go for that cover. You still may have enough time to get that three count. Well, Brand now joining Eli Drake back inside the ring, and Eli counters. Oh! That was blunt force trauma by Eli Drake! And a victory! And Eli retains! Eli Drake! Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, and still King of the Mountain champion, Eli! Drake. The fact of life. So Eli Drake, after a third attempt at the brighter side of suffering by Bram, Eli Drake, that third one connected. Partner, we talked about Eli fell to the floor. Bram gets him back in. Maybe Bram takes a little bit too much time. And bam, blood force trauma. We need to take a look at how this all unfolded throughout this match. And it's all right there, Bram. Devastating close out on the ref to Eli Drake. But that backdrop. by Eli Drake. And then oh. Bram with that power bomb, able to hang on, and then blunt force trauma. BFT and a victory for Eli Drake. He's still the King of the Mountain champion. I wonder if uh, Eli Drake will be popping some bottles of champagne tonight. Well, if you let him tell you, that's the fact of life, Tommy. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pope and Josh at ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, a matchup with great anticipation. Ethan Carter III, EC3, attempts to finalize his road to redemption against my opponent at this time, along with Maria. He is the miracle, Mike Bennett. Big time matchup coming up next. That's right, I am the miracle. And do you know why I call myself the miracle? I'll tell you why. Who's the best damn wrestler on the planet? Me! Who has the hottest wife at TNA? Me! Who has been the most dominant wrestler in TNA? You were gonna say EC3, weren't you? No, you, say no, you were gonna say EC3, weren't you? Well, it's not, it's me. You know, all, all these people, they like to compare me and Ethan. Well, Ethan, I am nothing like you. You see, you have flaws. I don't have flaws. I've traveled the world. I've won world titles all around the world. Ethan, you're just a spoiled little rich kid. And I'll tell you why I'm the miracle. Because I, and I'm, I am unstoppable. I did what Bully Ray, Sting, Jeff Hardy all couldn't do. I pinned the unpinnable EC3. So tonight, Ethan, you get your rematch. You get your Road to Redemption rematch. But Ethan, this story is not going to have a happy ending. No, Ethan, when this night is done, when this match is over, all these people out here will not be saying trouble, trouble, trouble. They will be saying, yes, we do. For over 30 months, nobody has pinned me. Unpinned. Nobody has made me submit. Unsubmitted. And I'm talking, guys, stay. Unbreakable. Angle. Undisputed. Bully Ray. Unbeatable. The Hardys. Unrivaled. The only thing that you have left is your streak. Never been pinned. Never been submitted. You want to be the man here? Beat me. Who's ever pinned me? Submitted me? No one. If ending this oh-so-glorious streak is what all these idiots need to believe in the miracle? No disqualification. Yes. No excuses. I. One winner. Do.
So, Ethan, when we go out there... Bennett was looking for the miracle in progress! EC3 counters one for center! The miracle's down! It doesn't matter if I pin you... And Maria runs interference! It doesn't matter if I make you tap out... EC3's got him locked! Mike Bennett is gonna tap out! All that matters is that I beat you. Bennett's got EC3's shoulders on the mat! EC3's... Holy sh... And in that moment, Ethan, when you finally look around... Over 800 days! And everyone is chanting, yes, we do! The streak has reached its conclusion! You will realize... The miracle Mike Bennett has pinned and defeated EC3! That the miracle has taken everything! But now, I am just a man with a vendetta. Michael Bennett, I swear to you, we will fight again. Well, here's what I offer. The EC3 Road to Redemption. If EC3 loses any of these matches on the Road to Redemption, he does not get his rematch. The Road to Redemption may end here. This is not good. Watch out. Spot Iron Down! Pure power by the ass-kicking machine. According to Mike Bennett, EC3 had to win this match by pinfall or submission in order to get the miracle in a one-on-one -on -one match at Slammiversary. Miracle, you put me through hell to get this rematch? I'm going to put you through hell. In Slammiversary, I'm going to church to punch God in the mouth. Welcome to my place of worship. My name is Maria Canellis Bennett, and I am the first lady of professional wrestling. And I just have one question for you. Do you believe in the miracle? Mike 
trying to put so many roadblocks in between himself and EC3. The road to redemption. Six sides of steel against Rockstar Spud. The last man standing match against Tyrus. The match against Matt Hardy that EC3 had to win by pinfall or submission that the miracle got involved in and ruined. Mike Bennett thought that he had rid himself of EC3. Dixie Carter, our president, put EC3 in control of Impact Wrestling for one night only, and EC3 would get his match, make his match for tonight, make his match for Slammiversary against Mike Bennett. A lot of time in this business, it's about place, it's about timing, and EC3 was appointed the reins of Impact Wrestling at the right place at the right time, and he finally is going to get his hands on Mike Bennett. EC3 draws the line in the canvas, and here we go. All the pomp and circumstance is over. The battle that they got in, in their official weigh-in, is over. Collar and elbow tie up, and here we go. EC3 versus the miracle Mike Bennett. If Mike Bennett wins tonight, where does EC3 go from here? That's a good question. If Mike Bennett wins tonight, then hopefully EC3 will be the bigger man. Stand up and shake Mike Bennett's hand and say, you know what? You did it. Your thoughts on the first victory from Mike Bennett defeating EC3, was it a fluke? Well, you know what? Pope stands by everything he said about that win. Whether it was a fluke, a juke, whatever you look at it, he was able to, in the record book, he was able to get a victory over EC3. Will that happen here tonight is the question. Miracle Mike Bennett made his debut earlier this year in Impact Wrestling. Again, an immediate impact and an immediate change from the miracle. EC3, arch shoulder tackle there from the former two-time world champion. And the two-time world champion with two shoulder blocks. Looking for a third, maybe? Oh! Back elbow there by the miracle Mike Bennett. Talk to me about the strategy that both men need to implement in this matchup. Well, you know what? When you talk about strategy for EC3, that's not something that really needs to be spoken about because obviously he has to keep his eyes on Maria. And don't worry about the first lady of professional wrestling, Maria, but just keep your eye on her and make sure that she doesn't play a factor in this. And then you have to also understand that EC3 has to keep his cool. Reversal here, nope, short arm reversal by EC3, and a big chop keeps the hand locked here of the Miracle Mike Bennett. How hard will it be for Bennett to defeat EC3 twice? <laughs> We're talking about two plus years. How hard was it for any man to come close to defeating EC3? Some got close, but they never did it. Mike Bennett, he got the victory. How hard is it going to be? It's going to be harder than hell. Excuse Pope French to do it again here tonight, but it can be done. EC3 looks poised, calm, and calculated here. He's been waiting for this match. He's wanted this match against the miracle Mike Bennett who gets the boot up. You know, you, you, you talk about the miracle like he's some sort of pushover, man. The miracle can go. The miracle is an all-around athlete. Uh, he's, he, he's traveled the world. He brought his brand here to Impact Wrestling, and he's delivering just like he said he would. I don't think Mike Bennett is a pushover at all as EC3 continues to go to work here, continues to go after the miracle Mike Bennett on the outside of the ring. I mean, Mike Bennett, he could simply put on his resume, I pinned EC3, it could start and end right there. Right, right there. Ooh, listen to that. Hard shot from EC3 to the miracle on the outside. It's like sounding the dog on symbol. And you know the, the important part about this matchup when you talk about can Mike Bennett win? It's not Mike Bennett's place. It's not the Miracle's place to defeat EC3. EC3 has to defeat Mike Bennett. Ooh. Another hard shot there by EC3. EC3 talked about a culmination here tonight. Oh, boy. Going for that EC3 splash. Oh, and a clothesline on the outside of the ring from Mike Bennett to EC3. Quick thinking on, on the part of Mike Bennett. Some of the fans in the impact zone here. 
Mike Bennett will take a count out victory over EC3 as referee Brian Hebner begins his count. And see, that's a veteran move. That's a smart move on behalf of the Miracle. Because this is what can happen. Two things can happen. EC3 can get count out. He can win the match. Or EC3 struggles to get in. Mike Bennett get, regains his breath, composure. And right to your point, Bennett flies in. Drop kick right to the side of the face of EC3, who's again down. And again, Bennett, to your point from before, can catch his, his win, breath. Yeah. yeah, he's getting his win back. He's, he's going to try to uh, keep EC3 out of there. You know what? That may be part of his game plan. Let's see what happens here. EC3's coming back up again. You talked earlier about EC3 having to keep his cool in this matchup. Why is that so important? Well, you, because you don't want to lose your cool when you have a strategy, when you have a plan, and we know that EC3 has something in his head when he says that I'm going to beat you, Mike. I'm going to be the devil to your so-called God. So we know he has a plan. If he loses, then you lose focus of that game plan. Bennett rearranging the furniture here at ringside. He's got EC3 up on the steel barricade. No, 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 no. If this happened, Bennett, oh, it's DDT. EC3 may be out. The miracle Mike Bennett just DT DC3. Hangman version onto that ramp. EC3 is down. Did you hear the thud? Yeah. Certainly did. You can see the results of EC3 down on the outside. And again, it, it looks like Mike Bennett. Yeah. He's he's got a pinfall victory over EC3. If he can get this victory. Uh, by count out, he'll take it as we take another look here at this amazingly devastating. Oh man, tough to watch again. And now Bennett. I'm surprised that EC3 even made it back to the row. Cover and a kick out by EC3. And the funny part was, you you asked me about both guys and their strategy, and I really didn't have to touch on Mike Bennett, the miracle, but I'll touch on it right now because we've already seen, you know, his strategy. Keep EC on, EC3 on the outside of the ring, maybe. On the forefront, that's what you see. But the bottom line is, he's saying, I want a victory no matter how it happens. That's his strategy. That's his game plan. Do you think EC3 would be complete with a victory by count out? Absolutely not. That's not the type of uh, wrestler EC3 is. EC3 said earlier that the best thing that Mike Bennett did was, oh, nice neck breaker there by Bennett. EC3 was talking about Bennett defeating him, and it was the worst thing that could have happened for Bennett, the best thing for EC3. So he's putting his spin on this. Is EC3. He wants a victory here tonight against Mike Bennett. What a clothesline. Bennett trying to follow up here. EC3 throws Bennett off and a clothesline by EC3. A flurry of offense from Ethan Carter the third. Oh! EC3 misses with that splash. It's the second time EC3's missed with the splash. Bennett looking for the... Thought he was looking for the miracle in progress. EC3 counters. Bennett stacked up on his shoulders. Let it strength. Power! Sit out power bomb by EC3. And Bennett kicks out at two. Wow, wow, wow. EC3 just went, just powered up Mike Bennett. Hey. Powered him up and drove him down with that power bomb. And Bennett had the wherewithal to kick out at two. Very impressive. Both men back in the ring now after that Hangman's DDT from Bennett to EC3. Looking for a one percenter here. Bennett throws it off. EC3 hangs onto the top rope. And Bennett! Nice spine buster! Caught EC3, hooks the outside leg! And EC3 kicks out at two. Mike Bennett delivered that spine buster with some snap, Daddy. Are we seeing some frustration by the miracle? Yeah, I was just about to point that out. Bennett now, stalking EC3. Ooh, big shot! This is four. EC3 looks to be out on his feet. I rocked EC3 all the way back to the corner. And now Bennett mocking EC3 with a big splash in the corner of his own. Oh! And Cutter by the miracle Mike Bennett. EC3 counters with a clothesline. Pull the man match. down. What a match. 
It's like that cutter just woke EC3 up. They popped up and delivered a vicious clothesline. This has been a heavyweight collision between these two rivals. Referee Brian Hebner. Now it's seven. And it's the miracle who strikes first. Both men struggling to stay on their feet as they throw those big haymakers. Think about everything they've been through in this matchup. That one landed solid. Solid good. And it went for the big shot, EC3 countered. And here comes EC3 trying to build momentum. Oh, another clothesline. All these shots, partner, they certainly add up throughout a match. Absolutely, it, it takes its toll. It takes its toll on the body. It takes its toll on the win. EC3 finally connects with the splash. And now EC3. Big flat jack there. EC3 again looking for the one percenter connects. Bend it's down. EC3 is going to get his redemption of the miracle kicked out of the one percenter. How often do we see anyone kick out of EC3's one percenter? And not very, if ever. What, is, what has got to be going through the mind of EC3 right now? Yeah, well, he just hit him with his best shot, that's for sure. Maybe go for another, I don't know, but you, you got to know. EC3 right now is saying, what do I have to do now to beat the Miracle Mike Ben? And EC3 got all of that one percent. Oh, he connected well. So EC3 has to be thinking about his next move Absolutely. here in this chess game against Mike Bennett. All the while, he's he's being locked up here by Bennett. Oh! Ben is doing the right thing. EC3! but it was effective. But think about everything that Bennett's done to the neck yeah. of EC3 in this match, that Hangman's DDT, and then this TK3. Here, let's take a look at it right here. Ooh! Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell who took the worst of that. Well, EC3 is up to the top rope here. EC3 looking to elevate against Mike. Oh, the corner! The miracle caught EC3 with another cutter. It might be over. Bennett with the cover hooks the inside leg, and EC3 kicks out of two. We were talking about what must EC3 do. He was thinking about that next big move. He tried it on the outside, and then he went to the top, and it almost cost him the matchup. Will it cost him the match? Can the miracle Mike Bennett capitalize? And it's got EC3 up, and EC3 with the submission maneuver. He put that Cobra clutch on. EC3's got Bennett. We saw Bennett almost tap out to this before. A low blow by the Miracle. Unbeknownst to the official, and Bennett with a pile driver. Oh, man. Cover on EC3, leg is hooked, and Ethan Carter kicks out of two. There's a lot more fight left in EC3. He's staying alive. He does not want to lose to the miracle, Mike Bennett. Not again. And now it's Mike Bennett who's thinking, what do I have to do next? I've kicked out of the one percenter. I just delivered a devastating pile driver, and EC3 still kicked out. And Bennett again looking for that big punch countered by EC3. A German suplex. Rock the hands. He's holding on to it as EC3. He got him again. Suplex from EC3. He's going for the one percenter. He got him. Another one percenter by EC3. A cup. Maria threw a chair in the ring. Brian Hebner laid on the count and a kick out at two. Oh. You can call it what you want, but that was a smart move by the first lady, Professor Elsa Maria, to keep this matchup going. The match man. should be over. EC3 had this match won with a one percenter. Stay cool, EC3. This is what I was talking about. Don't lose your cool, Daddy. Well, you get back to the ring. Hey. 
EC3 has to stay focused. And EC3 now is heading back to the ring. The smoking gun, the steel chair is between EC3 and Mike Bennett. Bennett looking for the miracle in progress here. The miracle in progress on a steel chair. Mike Bennett is going to steal another victory from EC3. There's Brian Hedger. This is a travesty. And EC3 kicks out at two. It's not over till it's over. And Daddy EC3 says it's not over. EC3 kicked out at two. And there's the choir. They've come alive as EC3 called them. They're singing this song. Bennett's still in control, though. The Miracle is still in control of EC3. A smile on the face of the Miracle Mike Bennett. EC3 counters. And EC3 with a TK3. And now, a one percenter again. EC3 with the cover. And EC3 finds his redemption. The winner of the match, Jason Carter, the third EC3. Ethan Carter the third has defeated the Miracle Mike Bennett. Live at Slammiversary. But it took everything EC3 had to earn this victory here tonight. And you know what? He had to bring it. He had to bring it all his A game and some plus game in order to pull out the victory. And he did it. He showed great resilience in the in the face of adversity. And he came out on top. Did EC3? Tremendous resolve by EC3. Three one percenters. Yeah. Mike Bennett did kick out of the first one. We'll never know if he was going to kick out of the second one because Maria set that chair inside the ring and broke up the count. Yeah. Wow. That third one was all it took. Doubled it with a TK3. Followed it with that one percenter. They talked about being able to do this for years to come. EC3 and the Miracle Mike Bennett won a match here tonight and a victory for EC3 at Slammiversary. It is the hour that people never thought would materialize. Brother Nero, your hero, meets his end day. You see, ever since birth and to the moment he tried to end me, Brother Niwo has always gotten back up. But tonight, that all ends. Because he must pay for his sins against me. He refuses to admit our entire careers, I have been his heart. I have been his brain. I have been his soul. I am the reason for his success, for his life, for his career. Without me, Brother Nero, there would be no you. And now I realize I have put all of the pieces together. My survival means your total destruction. And I will do it with the building blocks that have made the Hardy legacy so famous. I will do it with the table. I will do it with the chair. And I will do it with the ladder. I will bludgeon you until you are no more. And all of the creatures will realize that I am the true face of Hardy. Brother Nero, tonight, I delete you, and once and for all, it's over. We started back in uh, 1992. We're, we're from a small town, like, hey, there's, there's, there's nothing here. You're in the middle of nowhere. A population of 210 people in Cameron. What's the odds of two people you know, becoming superstars and uh, a global company. What started as teenagers chasing a dream in North Carolina, now Matt and Jeff Hardy are household names. For the first time in their legendary, illustrious careers, and Jeff Hardy are tag team champions. So I woke up on the ground and, and I could not get up. I said, oh my God, we, we just won the world tag team titles. And I just broke my leg on my dirt bike. Watching Matt give up those tag titles sitting at home, it was just, you know, it was horrible, the feeling of letting all my fans down, letting Matt down. I mean, it was heartbreaking. Matt Hardy's experience.
direction has completely changed. My beautiful wife said it's time for you to stop giving and start taking. And she was right. This isn't the Matt Hardy that we've been watching for over a decade. What the hell is going on? Why, Matt? Why? We are a family. Who was there for him when you abandoned him after winning the World Tag Team titles? It's time to stop giving and start taking. How dare you stain the Hardy name? The creatures chant Hardy for a reason, Matt. It's everything we've accomplished, everything we've done together. I don't care about them. I want to beat you. I want to hurt you. And I'm going to show the world that there's only one Hardy. Side of Matt. Look at the twisted guardrail. You know if we do this, neither of us win. The only real Hardy is me, Matt Hardy. Jeff Hardy will not quit. 30 or 35 feet off the ground. Missed it in both of their careers. Lay it all on the line. I will not quit. A swan ton from the heavens! I broke mad, I broke the table, I broke myself. Our relationship is broken. This is your brother, your own flesh and blood. And after what you did, he's different. He's changed. We expect me to stick around that lost his mind. I can't talk to him, but I'm done. So with you, I'm done with Matt, I'm done with all of this. Done. Just I can't. Brother Nero. I knew you'd come. This must all end where it all began. You want to fight? You will get one at Slim Yes! Yeah. The hell is wrong with you? Oh. It's, it's the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. Matt Hardy looks like he's seeing a ghost. He wanted this fight. It's Matt and Jeff Hardy. They're going at it right now. He is broken. The most full metal mayhem Sunday. We, the creatures at Slammiversary, will end this. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a Falls Count Anywhere Full Metal Mayhem Match. Attention, useless creatures. Allow me to introduce to you the man who will delete Brother Nero. Purge your minds of the mat you knew before and welcome a broken Matt Hardy. the complete transformation of Matt Hardy. Are you sure it's complete? I mean, because there's no telling about the limits that this guy will go through or go to, and who knows, after the night, we may see a further transformation of Matt Hardy. He speaks differently. He's talked about deleting Brother Nero. This is what obsession has driven Matt Hardy to this point with his brother, Jeff Hardy. Yeah. He won't even address Jeff by name. He calls him Brother Nero. Brother Nero. It only gets more and more bizarre as it relates to Matt Hardy. And now, introducing his opponent from Cameron, North Carolina, the charismatic enigma. He is Jeff Hardy. And here comes Matt. And remember, folks, like JB said, falls count anywhere in this full metal mayhem match. Yes, sir. We're already seeing why this is called full metal mayhem. We got some new news right now. So still, if you will, trash can to the back of Matt Hardy. It was Matt Hardy who brought the fight to Jeff, and Jeff Hardy not backing down at all. Jeff Hardy with that garbage can off the back of Matt Hardy. Well, some of everything that's going to come into play here, still metal. A little 
aluminum. Take your choice. It's full metal mayhem. We saw what went down in Cameron, North Carolina, what had everyone talking. The scene between Matt and Jeff Hardy. Wait, wait did you see that? Yeah. Huh. It almost like it didn't even face Matt Hardy to go into the bunker head first. Matt Hardy now. Oh, and a spear by Jeff. Jeff just launching himself into Matt Hardy. But Jeff has been waiting for this opportunity. I think Jeff Hardy has tried to talk sense into Matt Hardy. There's just no talking to Matt at this point. Well, 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 who understands him? I mean, Matt won't talk to anyone. It's definitely not Nero, as he calls him. If you look at the eyes of Matt Hardy and you listen to what Matt Hardy has to say right now and as it relates to this match, Matt Hardy has completely changed. Jeff Hardy looking for a table. A kendo stick flies in from Matt Hardy. This is just the beginning. This isn't going to be a wrestling match. This is going to be a violent brawl between these two brothers. Just the tip of the iceberg between these two. Matt Hardy looks frantic right now. It rings side in the ladder. Into the arm of Jeff Hardy. So you think about why Matt is frantic or looks frantic. Look, this is the opportunity. This is probably the only opportunity he's going to have when you're in a full metal mayhem match. I mean, that weighs in your favor when it comes to deleting anybody. Because everybody that steps into this match, they leave worse for wear than they came in. But partner, even that phrase, I'm going to delete Brother Nero, that doesn't strike you as odd. Obviously it does. I think it strikes everyone as odd, but look at Matt Hardy. He's an odd guy. He certainly has transformed into one of the most bizarre individuals we have ever seen. Ever. Matt Hardy has a table set up at one side. Jeff Hardy's still down after Matt used the ladder over and over into Jeff. Jeff may not get up here. That's why he's out. <laughs> Continuing this onslaught here in Matt Hardy as we start to cringe at ringside. Matt Hardy looking to put his brother through a table. <laughs> and fighting it off. And Jeff with a suplex of his own. You can see the carnage at ringside, the busted garbage can. Just throwing that trash can loaded with some other weapons, but it's not his weapon of choice. He's looking for something. And again, Jeff off the back of Matt. You know, Matt has talked about Brother Nero being a symbol, that everyone has Brother Nero's in their lives that they need to get rid of. If you follow Matt Hardy on social media, I mean, you could be reading his tweets and posts all day long. Oh, well, who are you telling? Big ladder here by Jeff Hardy and Jeff. Not your average. This is normal ladder. This is retaliation for what Matt did moments ago to Jeff Hardy. And now it's Matt who's down. Momentarily, though, Matt's back up. And oh, another shot by the ladder. One more for good measure. Jeff Hardy is going for it. Jeff Hardy trying to get the impact zone behind him here in this full metal mayhem. False count anywhere match. Talk about the, the hatred that must be there for one to say to his own brother, I'm going to delete you. Or think about this relationship itself between the two brothers and what it's come to. They're the full metal mayhem match, Mark. All the emotion. Everything that Matt and Jeff have been through together. Yeah. Jeff trying to take the oxygen away from Matt Hardy. He's just following with some shots straight to the face. Jeff Hardy has certainly attempted to wear down Matt Hardy in this matchup here. And what does Jeff have in store? Slingshot over the top, oh. rope through the table. Cover oh. here, cover here. Hooks the leg and Matt kicks out at two. Again, falls count anywhere. Very smart by Jeff Hardy. He followed through and went straight for the cover after he drove his brother through that table. Over the top rope splash. Big move there by Jeff Hardy and not enough to put away Matt. Partner, what is it going to take to win this match? Your guess is as good as mine, Daddy. For one, I was going to say that because this match can go either way at any given time. Another shot to the back by Jeff Hardy to his brother Matt. That's 
time with a steel chair. Jeff Hardy so innovative. Yeah, look how big the ladder is, though. I mean, I haven't, I've never seen a ladder like that inside yeah, the ring. What's he going to do with that ladder? How is he going to get to stand up? I mean, but it's Jeff Hardy. Well, Jeff Hardy now extending this ladder. Oh, my God. And everyone is looking up, including myself. It's at the top of the impact zone. Yeah. Jeff now. He's got the ladder fully extended from one side of the ring. Jeff has something in mind. All the way to the other. And the impact zone has come to life. Oh, boy. Twist to hate by Jeff Hardy to his brother Matt. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, boy? Matt Hardy's on a ladder that's extended from one side of the six-sided ring to the other in the center of the ring. That's got to be 25 feet from one side to the other. Jeff Hardy to the top row. Oh, what a splash by Jeff. Yeah, you can say that again. Jeff Hardy cover on Matt. Has Jeff done enough? And Matt kicks out at two. Of all the years that I've followed professional wrestling, I have never seen something like that done. I've never seen a ladder just cross the ring. That's how much Hardy, times. Look, yeah. look at that ladder. Look at the twisted steel in the center of the ring right now as we take another look at what Jeff just did. Jeff Hardy just launches himself off the top rope. Big splash into Matt Hardy through that ladder. The ladder is twisted and bent and still in the center of the ring. Jeff Hardy on the other side now. A swat to the knees. Oh, man. Oh, man. Knees were up by Matt Hardy. Bad landing for Jeff. Matt Hardy drapes an arm over Jeff Hardy, and Jeff kicks out at two. Just like that, it could have been over. This nice rivalry count. has come to this full metal mayhem. Another look at the swanton into the knees. The point of the knees by Matt Hardy. You just can't look away at what has transpired and gone down in this match here. You know, you don't want to. I don't want to. I've been waiting for this. The fans of Impact Wrestling have been waiting for it. All eyes are on Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. Look at Matt, look at Matt just biting the face. The sick and grotesque actions of Matt Hardy. Oh, oh man, did you hear? Wow, buckle the knees of Jeff Hardy. And Jeff, twist the, twist the fate. Love. Matt Hardy escaped. Matt popped free at the last second. I don't know if he popped free. I don't know if it was half connected or connected. And hell, we saw Matt Hardy go into the buckle and it didn't phase him. Hold that thought. Oh, no. Matt Hardy was biting Jeff's ear. I've never heard Jeff scream like that. I've never seen a more psychotic individual than Matt Hardy and what this man has become. He's transformed for the worse. That's for sure. It all started here in the impact zone when Jeff delivered that swanton from the heavens through Matt Hardy, and since then, Matt Hardy has never been the same. What does Matt have in mind for Jeff Hardy now? Ooh. Jeff firing back. Look at the intensity in the eyes of Jeff Hardy. Got caught. No, no, no. Side effect onto the apron. Matt Hardy just leveled Jeff with that side effect. Hardest part of the ring. Jeff Hardy may be out cold. He's limp. Jeff Hardy is limp. Jeff Hardy is down. Jeff Hardy may be out. I mean, just cover him, Matt. Oh, Matt, whoa. Oh, Lord. A keyboard. You heard the strange new music of Matt Hardy earlier. Is that where it came from? Everything's legal. Matt probably played it himself. Remember when Jeff Hardy entered the home of Matt? Matt was playing yeah. the, the piano, the keyboard. And Oh, perhaps a symbol here by Matt Hardy, a symbolic gesture with this keyboard. Uh, by the broken Matt Hardy. What? He almost doesn't look human, partner. What, 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 what is Matt Hardy doing? Is 
to go to play a tool. That is the man obsessed. <laughs> Matt Hardy. Trying to get everything set up just the way he wants it to destroy who he calls Brother Nero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what's about to happen. But it can't be good for Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy again. That side effect off the apron may have done so much damage to Jeff Hardy. And now Matt, he's got Jeff looking for a power bomb through the. Just end it! Cover by Matt Hardy, and Jeff kicked out! He kicked out! Power bomb through the keys, look at this! Oh, man! Oh, man, I mean, Jeff Hardy's head went fast into the ground. Just think about what Matt Hardy has been thinking about. Matt Hardy knew at some point that he was gonna want to power bomb his own brother through a keyboard that he put one underneath the ring. Right, right, right. And Matt Hardy now setting up the ladders and the tables to do more damage, to inflict more pain to his own flesh and blood. Is it to his own blood? Is it possible after that? I mean, what can he do that? Well, Jeff kicked out. Jeff kicked out. Jeff Hardy survived. And now this deranged, psycho Matt Hardy has two ladders, excuse me, two tables set up at ringside. And think about it. If the deranged Matt Hardy thought of what he just did to his brother using the keyboard, and that was very, very bad, by the way, imagine what this is going to be. The outcome of this, Emma. Goes and collects Jeff now. Holes for Jeff Hardy here inside the impact zone. I actually I had to turn away from this replay. I mean, it was just devastating. Out on the keyboard. Jeff is laid out over two tables. And now Matt Hardy. Look at Matt Hardy. Look at this man. Look at what he's become. I'm looking. Oh, no. Holmes Watson, no, 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 Matt can't do this. Jeff has made his way back to his feet now Thank inside you. the ring. Thank and you. Jeff Hardy, he may be just as crazy as Matt. He's joining Matt Hardy up on the ladder. Well, that's one thing, you can't out crazy Jeff Hardy. Jeff and Matt Hardy, high above the ring. And now the, oh! Both Hardys down. The impact zone trying to will Jeff back to his feet. This wasn't going to end well for either Hardy. Fighting for, for, for position and both men go crash into the top row. Matt's back to his feet. Jeff right there behind him. Jeff Hardy counters and Jeff trying to fight off Matt. You know, Matt has a saying, Matt will not die. Well, you know what? Say can be said for Jeff Hardy. He always fights. He doesn't stop. Oh! Keeps coming. Jeff Hardy staying one step ahead of Matt right now. Classic Jeff Hardy. Covered by the charismatic enigma and a kick out by Matt Hardy. Jeff's back up. I don't believe he's back up. He's really, he's rocking, he's feeling it. Jeff Hardy's not human. <laughs> Jeff Hardy's a superhero. Just, he's just got, him. He he hit got him. Matt's down. Jeff Hardy, this is it. he went for a swan time earlier and met the knees of his brother Matt. Jeff, swan time delivered. Swan time connected. Matt Hardy down and Matt Hardy kicks out. I guess the same can be said for Matt Hardy. Both of these guys, they're just gonna one up each other until the next man can't get up. That's what full metal mayhem is all about. You just got to lay out your opponent, almost incapacitate him. Yeah. Yeah. And in this full metal mayhem move, match, move. balls count anywhere, so they can take this wherever they want in the impact zone. This has just been a brawl. 
if you're watching Impact for the first time, these two are brothers. These two are flesh and blood. These two grew up together chasing a dream of being pro wrestlers in Cameron, North Carolina. Matt Hardy's not the same Matt Hardy. Jeff Hardy has his brother on a table. Oh! Dress of faith through the table by Jeff Hardy to his brother, Matt. Cover, able to hook the leg. Matt's down and Matt kicked out. How did Matt Hardy kick out of that? I don't know, but let's take another look at it. Listen. And Jeff will simply keep on going. The other table that Matt set up earlier yep. is there. It's in play. Why not use it? That's what we've known Jeff to do over all these years. Just keep going. He's like the Energizer Bunny. Good measures. Good Lord. Matt's on the table. Jeff Hardy. Get the impact zone behind him. You never know what Jeff Hardy, the daredevil, is going to do. Oh, Jeff Hardy! Swanton Bob! Swanton Bob! That's got to do it! That's got to be enough! Matt Hardy's down! Jeff Hardy has defeated his own brother, Matt. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, Jeff Hardy. That was full metal mayhem. Matt Hardy declared that he was going to delete brother Nero. These two put each other through hell. Look at the wreckage! Yeah, who you telling? Yes, Matt Hardy said that he was going to lead his brother Nero. Now, Paul so physical uh, expert, medical expert, but hell, Matt Hardy might have been deleted after that swan time bomb off of the top rope to the table. Good Lord. I cannot believe what we saw between two human beings. Two human beings that are brothers that literally beat the hell out of each other. I don't even know if that does it justice. I mean, one more look at the conclusion, the epic conclusion, the leap, the twist, the swanton, excuse me, from Jeff Hardy to his brother. Look, that table just imploding. All of his body weight, talking about Jeff Hardy, crashes down on that Hardy, followed by that three count. Now, Jeff Hardy's taking his victory lap around the impact zone, came behind us moments ago, and this has become customary of Jeff Hardy, but where does the broken Matt Hardy go now? Yeah, that's a good question. Deeper into the abyss? Uh, again, will we see even more of a transformation, further transformation now? I don't know what we're going to see from Matt Hardy, but Jeff Hardy was able to secure the victory with an incredible swan time. Again, as you take a look at the wreckage at Slammiversary. Look at me! Look! Into my eyes, it's okay. You can stare now. What do you see? I know what I see. Something that I hid for far too long. Something that my family made me realize. And that's now not a monster. I am beautiful. The future is now. And the future? is decay. <laughs> a future, a future full of warnings, full of chaos. We are creating nightmares for a new generation. <laughs> and the more that you try to fight it, the more that you try to stay awake, the sooner you will realize the nightmares are real. <laughs> decay never stays the same. DK is ever changing like a corpse lying in the field. <laughs> the next day it never looks quite the same. <laughs> and speaking of corpses, the Bromans, they died a long time ago. <laughs> and their resurrection has put them directly in our path. But they can be killed again. Our gold, might be a temptation to them. 
but their salvation <laughs> lies in the past. And their destruction lies in front of them in the form of decay. Decay? Decay! <laughs> It's going to go for one fall. It is for the World Tag Team Championship. Introducing first the challengers, accompanied to the ring by Raquel, the Bromance. The Bromance are Robbie E. and Jesse Goddard. They're two time World Tag Team Champions. Raquel is their guru. Raquel has been training the Bromance on how to focus and how to prepare themselves for decay and this opportunity at the World Tag Team titles. Gonna well, see how well that preparation has gone for the bromance. Will be pretty hard for Paul with as well. But hey, we'll see what happens, I know. And now, introducing their opponents. Accompanied to the ring by Rosemary. They are the TNA World Tag Team Champions. Crazy Steve, the Monster of Piss, The theme song from Marilyn Manson, and I don't think there was a better match ever made than Decay and Marilyn Manson. Absolutely, talk about a match made in heaven or hell. These guys are a, a, a tandem to be reckoned with. They are a force, and it goes to show because they have the TNA World Tag Team titles. Let's talk about Robbie E. He's a former X Division champion. Robbie E. wants to be known as a hybrid wrestler, and Robbie E. wants to be taken seriously. May be able to get there tonight if he's able to take his team to victory. Oh, you know, uh, as we see with certain people in the business like Grotto, you know, sometimes... Oh, that duck covered by Robbie E. and a kick out by Crazy Steve. Sometimes it's not just about the perception of how you are. I mean, once you get some gold, everybody's going to take you serious. And maybe that's why Robbie E wants to get the gold, Daddy. Talk about great matches and great matchups. How about the matchup of Abyss and Crazy Steve? I like that you call him Psychotic Steve now. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's simple. There's nothing crazy about, you know, crazy in you know, many types of ways. It's a crazy fun way. It's a crazy weird way. But he's just pure psychotic now that he's with the monster of this and Rosemary. Bobby E trying to rock the big man. Abyss who feels that he is now beautiful. I'm not going to tell him he's not either. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder as Abyss makes another tag to Crazy Steve. And Crazy Steve going to work here. Cross faces here. And look, 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 Crazy Steve. Ever since Psychotic Steve, if you will, ever since his transformation, his formation with the cane, he's become so much more aggressive. Oh, that's not a bad thing. You know, and Rosemary, she, I mean, she sprays the mist, she sprays it at the Monster Abyss, he takes off the mask, he's got the paint and everything underneath the crazy Steve. He has the ability to speak now, and Rosemary has certainly been a game changer for Decay, as has Raquel for the bromance. Well, when you talk about Raquel, you know, I talked to her earlier, I told her why Pope say Raquel, you know, I like to give my, my peeps their own name. She says she like it, but we're gonna stick with Raquel, because I know how you roll. But when I talked to her about it, I said, look, are you going to be the difference maker, not just in this tag team matchup? Oh, the drop, drop kick. kick! But are you going to keep Rosemary at bay? I got no answer. Wow, look at Jesse Goddard's go! Jesse Goddard's the man, he can't go. He can do it all. Look at Robbie E. He's getting ready to flow. And Robbie takes out the K. Look, there's Rosemary. Oh, no, Rosemary in the ring. This is, this is what I was talking about. It's the question I pose. Look at her. She don't care. We've seen Rosemary get inside the ring before and <laughs> help out Decay. And I don't think Rosemary has ever seen a man pick job. And Jesse Goddard's. He's got Rosemary. Oh, oh. Decay down at ringside. Down goes Rosemary. Down goes the Monster Abyss. Down goes Crazy Steve. Down goes the K. The Bromans in the driver's seat with the World Tag Team titles hanging in the balance. 
And I like this strategy by Jesse Goddard. Yeah, go get him. Get after the Monster Abyss. You got him down. You don't get the Monster Abyss down too often, so you got to take advantage of that opportunity. Jesse looking to springboard into the ring, and Crazy Steve was right there. Oh, Crazy Steve was right there. Steve all over Jesse outside the ring. Abyss inside now, cover on Jesse, who's down. He kicks out at two. Tag team titles on the line here. I said this, going to work, just working over Goddard's right now. Come on, Jesse! Let's see Abyss. He's got Jesse Goddard's on the wrong side of the ring. Jesse's got a long way to go. He's gonna make the tag for Robbie E. Yeah, get out of there, Stephen. Watch yourself. I don't think you can talk sense into a bitch. All right, well, uh, no, not really, but you can communicate with him. Obviously, Rosemary has. Now, Sadistic Stevie, the psychotic one, tag in. Crazy Steve, so quick. So deliberate with his actions. And he makes everything count. You gotta give the man credit. Every punch, every cross face, every move that crazy, sadistic Stevie does, he makes it count. Nice reversal by Jesse Goddard. Crazy Steve out of the buckle and drop kick to the knee. Like crazy Steve was quickly back up and now, oh, <laughs> wow. sided shot. We've seen probably half a dozen tags by the World Tag Team Champions. And that's why they're the World Tag Team Champions. And they're, they're isolating Jesse. They're keeping him away from his corner. And they're continually putting pressure. Continually putting pressure by Jesse Goddard. Shut up! They certainly communicate in a strange way, but it's affected the way that they communicate with one another. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing about being a tag team. Every tag team don't communicate the same way as one does to the other. But long as it's effective, Ooh. that's all that counts. Jesse gets the boot up. Creates some separation here. Jesse Goddard flies! Flying shoulder tackle takes down Abyss. Can Jesse make the tag to Robbie? Might be the separation that Jesse needs. He needs to get over there, spur to the corner, get the fresh man in, Robbie. Jesse crawling, tag made by Abyss, tag made, and here comes Robbie. The window of opportunity now open for the bromance. Robbie E's gotta take advantage. Reversal by Crazy Steve, short arm reversal by Robbie. And Robbie E connects. Nice maneuver there by Robbie E. The boot drop. And now Crazy Steve set for the ride. Ah, nice high back body drop there by the bromance to Crazy Steve. Oh, it's just like that. I'll see you double back backdrop, and I'll see you raise your clothesline. Must have been just bringing it. Double clothesline to the bro man. And Rosemary with the mist. She hit a miss. Robbie E got out of the way, and the monster is blinded. Look. He doesn't know he's got Crazy Steve. So slam the Crazy Steve about the monster abyss. Abyss just realized what he did. It may be too late as Goddard flies in. This might be the opportunity that the Bromans need. They're going for a partner. The Bro down connects. Followed by the Adonis Crab. We may have new tag team champions. Will Crazy Steve tap out? Jesse has it locked in. Can Steve hang on? Will the K be defeated in a miss? He's got Stifler. Come on, wait. I'm going to throw this Oh, in the mist. The mist. Into the eyes of Stifler. Oh. Somersault off the apron there. Crazy Steve is tapping out the ring. What is going on? Rosemary with the title. Raquel is in there. She's in there. Raquel with a close run. Raquel is on top of Rosemary. You go, girl. Chaos for the World Tag Team titles. Crazy Steve now with the championship. Jesse has to watch his back. Jesse. And Crazy Steve with the championship off the score of Jesse Goddard's. Oh, Rosemary takes up Raquel. 
Crazy Steve's got Jesse down. New referee. And Jesse kicked out of two. Kick out by Jesse Jones. You thought it was over with. What a scene. Referee Brian Hebner now in the ring. As Crazy Steve up to the top rope and there's Robbie E. Defense by Robbie shoves off Crazy Steve. And Jesse. Trying to lock up Crazy Steve. He's out his crap. He's, He's got to play. Will Steve top out again? This time with a referee in the ring. What a monster. Has got Jesse Goddard. Bill's looking for a choke slam. Jesse stays alive. Robbie down yet again. Jesse in abyss. Black hole slam. By the monster abyss. That has to be it. Crazy Steve. And a miss. What? Power oh, bomb to Steve oh, for man. Jesse. And Decay will retain their tag team titles. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the match. And still, world tag team champions, Decay. Where do you want to start, partner? <laughs> Where do you start? Where can you start? Carnage, but what a great matchup. What a great viewing for the audience, for all of them. Everybody here in Impact Wrestling. Just great. Decay retained the World Tag Team titles in incredible fashion. Big win for Decay here at Slammiversary. Standing by is our broadcast colleague, Jeremy Borash. Here at Slam Aversary and get ready because up next, the main event. The World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. The Destroyer Lashley challenging my guest at this time, Drew Galloway. Tonight's rules, the winner to be determined by knockout or tap out. I can tell by your toe and you see me as the underdog, JB. A lot of people feel that way. How is Drew Galloway gonna defeat the MMA machine, Bobby Lashley? First of all, let's go back. 16 years. 16 years in the making, leading to this night, working on the dream. The ups, the downs, the sacrifices. Everything in between to this moment, heading to the pay-per-view, heading to the main event, walking in as world heavyweight champion, and I will not let it slip away. There's not a man in this world like Bobby Lashley. He's busted my nose, broke my ribs, sent me to hospital. But I always come back. And he knows fine well, I've looked that man in the eye that I will never quit. He's gonna have to knock me out. I'm not just some random guy. I'm not some underdog. I'm not the captain for no reason. I'm not the world champion for no reason. I've been traveling this world, defending this title in multiple companies, multiple countries, multiple people. I'm the busiest wrestler in the world. I will never, ever stop the underdog. The underdog, I tapped out Kurt Angle. I sure as hell can beat Bobby Lashley. Our main event is moments away for the World Championship. Knockout or tap out? Galloway versus Lashley. Feel the anticipation, big fight feel in the impact zone. Ready. 
And look at Drew Galloway, the champion, has not taken his eyes off of Lashley from the moment since he walked out. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is your Slammiversary main event for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship with the winner to be determined by knockout or tap out. Introducing, first of all, the challenger. Weighing in at 272 pounds and coming to us from Denver, Colorado, he is the Destroyer, Leslie. And now, introducing his opponent from Air Scotland, weighing in at 255 pounds. He is the current reigning, defending TNA heavyweight champion of the world, Drew Galloway. 17 pound weight advantage for the challenger Lashley. Partner, let's talk about the stipulation for this world championship match, the stipulation set by our president, Dixie Carter. It's tap out or knockout. How does that play into the mindset and the strategy first of Lashley? Well, I mean, when you talk about that part, you have to think about the fact that you're dealing with an MMA superstar in Lashley, who is familiar. Oh, and the Claymore off the back. The Claymore, and Lashley's down. How smart, how smart was that of Drew Galloway? Wow, right out of the box. Lashley, he's got Drew Galloway, potential submission maneuver here. You can see he went for that schoolboy. Shoulders were down, but it's knockout or tap out. And Lashley quickly transitioned into this submission maneuver. And that's what Lashley's familiar with. Oh, what a powerful yeah. clothesline. Jeez. You know, you would have to think that the advantage of this, though, this matchup with the stipulations in place by President Dixon Carter, it plays to Lashley's advantage in Pope's opinion. This is familiar territory for last year. Trying to think back, I don't think we've ever seen either one of these men knocked out. Exactly. And I don't think we will see it here tonight, but who knows? These two have done everything to each other. And Drew Galloway, he's got a submission maneuver that he talked about earlier. Look at this. Look at Lashley then on his feet. Avoid any harm there. Yeah. The Iron Maiden, the move that Drew Galloway used to force Kurt Angle to tap out. And you know what? It's a credible move. You tap out Kurt Angle, you can tap out anybody. Look Lashley at Lashley. goes up and over in a powerful clothesline. Rocks the champion. Lashley can use any sort of submission. He can catch anything on Drew Galloway. Lashley also loves to use a rear naked choke. Yeah, and when we've seen him put that on many uh, opponents. When he put it on Drew Galloway here tonight, you can probably look to see that. Right now, though, Lashley trying to use his power advantage on Drew Galloway. Have you ever seen someone with so much heart in Drew Galloway? Oh, absolutely not. not you know, a lot of people have heart. You know, we've seen a lot of people come in with a lot of heart, but there's something about Drew Galloway that makes his heart special. And it's infectious. Absolutely. Contagious. You can feel it whenever you talk to Drew Galloway, how much he truly loves professional wrestling and Lashley so quick. And you know what Lashley's doing? He's softening up that midsection, that rib cage and area, because he wants that spirit at some point as well. And now a torture rack of sorts here by Lashley. Galloway quickly gets out. Now Galloway trying to spin and twist. And now the Iron Maiden. He, he, he locked it in. The Iron Maiden by Drew Galloway. Lashley quickly rolls around and now trying to break down the guard. Jeez. Of the spin world out. champion. Yeah. Lashley just spun out of it and came with some club and forearms. Just raining him down upon the champ. The claim, uh, excuse me, the, the Iron Maiden, is it a move that once you're in it for a couple of seconds, damage can be done, or is it something where, oh, prolonged effect from being in it longer? Absolutely. Down. Uh, and, and more importantly, uh -oh. the more you go back to it, again. Yeah. the more effective it's going to be. 
And that's what the champion Drew Galloway is doing right here. I don't think he's he realistically thinks there's gonna be a, a submission from Lashley this early, but he wants to wear him down. Look at the torque on the shoulder. Look at the shoulder see, of Lashley. You see the shoulder of Lashley. Drew Galloway came in with a brilliant plan. He delivered the Claymore kick right off the bat. The first move in this match was just a bang, a shot there by Drew Galloway. It only takes one blow to knock you out, and that could have been the one. And Lashley again going back to the power game. Trying to rely on that advantage. Oh, spear. spear! There it is! There it is! The Destroyer connects. Partner, I know you know how that feels. A spear by Lashley. Absolutely, Pope knows how it feels. Many people around here knows how it feels in Impact Wrestling, but there's somebody who knows it far too well, and that's Drew Galloway, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. This rivalry has been building for quite some time. <laughs> Drew Galloway, he wanted to fight Lashley on a few occasions, and Lashley would say, I'm going to do this on my time. No, I'm going to do this when I want to do it. Lashley is so calculating. It's the polar opposite of what Drew Galloway is. Galloway is emotional, and he wants to go, 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 go. And Lashley, no, I'm going to wait. Yeah. Well, you know what? You call him the destroyer. We know that tag is on Lashley. He's a destroyer. So he's calculated. He's calculating everything that he does. You know, it was a year ago that I started calling Drew Galloway the captain, and it's because Drew Galloway was the captain of Team Impact. And, he was, and he's also a leader. And he's yeah, a name that's stuck. Absolutely. Well, you know, Pope called him Leonidas, and I'm going to stay with that oh. today. I can't say it anymore. <laughs> because it's quite simple. Whether it's an army of 300 or an army of one, oh. and trust me, Lashley is an army of one, what? Drew Galloway is not going to back down. He's going to bring the fight with everything that he has. And you can see how close Lashley is staying to Drew Galloway. No space, no separation. And even in these tight quarters, Lashley is so dangerous. Absolutely. <laughs> One thing about Lashley, much like in boxing. Oh! Nice counter by Drew Galloway. And an overhead belly to belly suplex. Like a uh, double underhook. Partner, go back to your point. I want to hear the end of that. Absolutely. What I was going to say is when it comes to boxing, Pope knows boxing, Lashley's MMA. When you talk about those close corners, how he keeps himself in close proximity of his opponent, he uses the hip. He talks and turns himself with the hip. That's where the power comes from when he throws his punches and his blows. Does it take the height away from Drew being so close like that? Absolutely. And now, cross arm breaker coming. Lashley trying to connect here. Drew Galloway's got to keep his hands locked, or he's going to be in some serious trouble. Galloway's fighting it. Galloway rolled inside. And now Drew Galloway. Oh, wow. Boot straight to the. Good Lord. Straight to, yeah. to, was it to the eye? Yeah. 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 Look at the eye starting to swell, starting to shut up, yeah, actually. Blows up. Yeah. Yeah. Straight to the eye. I think it was the heel of the boot oh, yeah. from Galloway. And now you're going to have. Oh, man. Blurred vision. Yep. It's going to be hard for Lashley to see now in that eye. Partner, again, one of two things can happen when you see your own blood start to trickle down your face, and we may see what Lashley has here. Yeah. And he might get pissed off as well. Oh! You know, a lot of people, they see blood, man. They see red. They become incensed. Or you can retreat. We'll see what happens. And Lashley! A dominating spine buster there by Lashley the Destroyer. World champion is down. Lashley in control right now. It was a desperate kick by Galloway, and now delayed vertical. Suplex by the Destroyer. And now look at Lashley. Just stalking Drew Galloway. Galloway, he's going to get up, but he has no idea what's waiting for him. Oh. Now, it, it, look at that. Lashley did the right thing that time. He did not wait for Drew Galloway to turn around. He saw that Drew Galloway was about to turn, and he went in so that he could be there and meet him with that ferocious blow. And now both men up on the second rope is Lashley. Just a clubbing shot there. That was a haymaker. It looked like it grazed him, but effective him nonetheless. Lashley looking for a super. Oh! What a re 
reversal by Drew Galloway. That was brute strength. Drew Galloway flies through the air, connects with that clothesline off the top rope. You can only win by tap out or knockout. Referee Brian Hecker has started the count on Lashley. He's at three. Lashley will make it back to his feet. And Galloway with another Claymore kick. He made it back to his feet, only to get kicked out again by the champ. I can't count him. He's on his feet. He's on his feet. You can hear Brian Hebner saying, I can't count him. He's on his feet. And that's true. Lashley is up. The rope's helping him. Staying on his feet and a back elbow there by the challenger. Oh, another. Oh, what a spear. That was his desperation on Lashley's behalf. Drew Galloway was picking up Steve Parker, and he did the right thing. That's the right thing, yeah. Referee, Brian Hebner is at five. Who will make it to their feet first? Can either man get up after what we've seen? Lashley to one knee. Drew Galloway right behind him. Oh, thunderous chop. And Lashley, he's got him. Yep, yep. Lashley had Drew Galloway locked up there. Galloway fights free. Oh, and another running boot. Lashley all the way to the floor. Let me tell you something. With the height and the weight of the champion, Drew Galloway, when he throws a boot, he really throws it, and it hurts. Talk about damage. remember, guys. Drew Galloway going after Lashley here on the outside. Lashley has become such a changed man over the past number of months. He's so dangerous in or outside of the ring. Remember the brawl in the gym these two had as Lashley. Uh, Lashley has always been a dangerous competitor. He's always been a dangerous man. He just took it to a whole new level. Took the rule book through it out and said he's just going to do what he wants to do and nobody's going to stop him. See the look in the eyes of Lashley here. He wants to become world champion. Reversal by Galloway. And this time, Lashley goes shoulder first into the steel steps. <laughs> Lashley down, writhing in pain. Drew Galloway now. Starting to build some momentum. You saw that Lashley readjusting that head, man. Uh -oh. Galloway oh, no. looking for a Celtic cross. Oh, no. A Celtic cross on the stale stairs. That has to be it. Lashley's out. Think about the spine of Lashley going into the steel steps. One more look if you can take this. Oh. oh man. This, he's stopping the count. This could. Drew stopped it. Drew Galloway wants to inflict. Oh, does Galloway have in mind now? Lashley is on the steel steps. Oh, wow. I think I know what's going on here, partner. Drew Galloway threw up, idolizing Brett the Hitman Hart. That was his favorite wrestler. And you know what? Even to this day now, Brett Hart often talks about Drew Galloway and says, there. The sharp shooter on the steel steps. It was broken up by referee Brian Hebner, but how much damage is done as Galloway delivers another Claymore kick? And think about it. You hit the, what was that? The, the, the thing on the steps should put that stuff to cross. You hit the cross right. Back, right? Yeah. Let's see a replay of this right here. Look at the boot. champion with the table outside the ring. This may be an exclamation point. Lashley made it back to his feet. Lashley was up momentarily. So the count stopped as Drew Galloway, I don't think, was expecting Lashley not to get up. He continued to go with right. his game plan and go after a table. Right. 
What is that game plan? What does Drew Galloway have in mind for last year right now? Lashley up on the table here. We've seen so much tonight at Slammiversary. And now you've got the challenger for the world championship on a table at ringside in a match that has to end in knockout or tap out. We've seen a lot of crazy things here tonight. Oh, boy. And the champion is saying that he is going to fly. At 6'7", 255 fly. pounds, Drew Galloway! Crash and burn through the table! Drew Galloway put it all on the line with this. Look at Drew Galloway fly with a top rope like Superman! Daddy, he crashed hard. Lashley says start the count. Brian Hunter at three. Oh. Now at five and we're halfway to crowning a new world champion. Hey, come on. Lashley broke the count to deliver more offense. Come on, that's a smart thing to do, too. If your opponent is moving, he has opportunity to get up. Yeah, it looked like Drew was going to beat the count, and Lashley wanted to stop Drew Galloway from getting to his feet. And now Lashley <laughs> delivering shots and forearms. Lashley says count him. Lashley says start the count. Ryan Hebner now with two. Lashley is inside the ring now. Drew Galloway still down on the outside. Brian Hebner quickly makes it to five. Can Drew Galloway beat the count? Will the world champion be defeated? Now at eight, two seconds away. Galloway's up! Oh, man. A bloodied and battered world champion is up! Man, he's seething right now, Danny. Drew Rose from the wreckage of that busted table. Oh, my God, a headbutt to the, to the eye, to the eye, Lashley. And now the world champion, Floyd Lashley, caught him with an armbar. Crossface, Lashley's got Drew Galloway. Drew Galloway is going to tap out. Lashley pulling back, Galloway trying to get to his feet. Lashley's leaning in, trying to keep him from getting up with the champ. Galloway's up. Galloway's, Galloway's got Lashley. Two star power driver back. Galloway. That's it. That's got to do it. Oh. Brian Hedger starts the count champion and challenger are down. I don't know if he got all of it the way he wanted to. Talking about Galloway. Listen to this place. The champion. Drew's up. Lashley's still down. The count will continue. And he's looking. He's summoning it. He's calling for it. Claymore sidestepped. Big shot by oh, Lashley. Man. Big right hand. That's Lashley. He's got another submission maneuver. Drew Galloway is fading. Look at Lashley, look at the torque. Yeah. The arm is trapped. The head is trapped. And the world champion is out. Season. The world champion is out. Lashley did. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match. And new TNA world champion, the Destroyer, Lashley. Drew Galloway was in a submission maneuver, but he was knocked out before he could tap out. And Lashley, the Destroyer, is a three-time world champion. Lashley calling with that big right hand, knocked out the champion. So to speak, and then he followed in. And once he put the, put the clutch on, once he clamped down, cut off the blood, cut off the oxygen, the champion was done. 
The doctor's in the ring now as they take a look at the now former world champion Drew Galloway Lashley standing tall with the world championship. What does every other member of the roster now think that Lashley is the world champion? Two words, Daddy, and I just got to borrow this phrase where they're saying, who's next? Is it me? A valiant effort as we take another look. Galloway was looking for a claymore. It was sidestepped, and what a punch. What a shot. A knockout blow. Unbelievable. And then you can see Lashley. The arm was trapped there. Drew Galloway, and that, that lean forward right there. Lean back. Yeah. And that was it. Cut off the blood flow. You cut off the blood flow, you cut off the oxygen, you cut off the oxygen. Brian Hebner was there to stop it right there. He saw that yeah. Galloway was fading and the eyes were yeah. rolling in the back of his head. Brian Hebner said, that's it. This match is over. The Lashley era is upon us. The era of the Destroyer. It's a whole new world with Lashley now 